no jumper and today we're in here for a very very exciting episode with the one and only larry lawton how you doing larry hey how you doing adam very very excited to have you on here man i watched your vlad interview last night i've been checking out a lot of the uh the the content that you've been putting on your youtube channel and it's it's great man you got a you got an amazing story you know i i I think it's more amazing because I went away for not telling, mm. did all my time, beat a life sentence, got out, and and didn't just fade away. You know, right. I went I went the next step. I developed a program to help kids all over the world. It's the number one program in the United States right now. Mm. And I lived a fucking crazy life. Adam. Right. I mean, from robbing eighteen fucking million, twenty stores. Uh, FBI wanted me. They're the ones who got me. I've been shot. I've been stabbed twice. I stabbed two people. I lived a crazy life. And I look back at it and say, it's like normal to me. You know, it's just crazy. And the crazy part about it is think about all the guys you are around who are the same age as you, who probably did some time along the way. And I don't know, what the, what the fuck are they doing? And meanwhile, you're the rare person who's actually able to make something out of their life experience, no matter how traumatic it was. You know, especially being organized crime, too, you know, connected to get rid of my diamonds and all my, we can, whatever, we'll get into that. It's right. crazy. And uh, even getting out of that lifestyle and knowing all the guys and friends of mine that are dead and friends of mine are never getting out of prison, like you said. Right. And then going to Atlanta, which is the worst prison in the country at the time. We had a murder a month for 18 months. So that just gets it more and say, why aren't they doing it? But... Man, I just gotta stay away. And it, it, it's sometimes a draw, you know. Don't don't think it's not. Getting back in the streets? Well, no, I mean, you know, there's always the times I can go buy a place and think I could rob it. Mm. You know, I had that bad way. I, I'm an older guy now, and I still feel young, or, you know, ready to do things, and that's why I'm doing what I do. Plus, right. I like helping a lot of people as well. Well, you're somebody so. who I think you have a lot of energy, and you being able to channel it into something is very, very important. Like, if you weren't putting all this effort and energy into making content and going out and doing all this stuff, where would that energy be going? I mean, unless you can find a productive outlet for it, it's going to go into bad stuff because there's always going to be opportunities to do bad stuff. That, that, that's a great point, and you're probably right, you yeah. know. Even at my age, and, you know, you get back issues, you know, but I was always doing stuff. I can foresee that. You know, you're smart, and it, it, and it always just, you never know when things. I've been on TV for 15 years. Right. You know, best-selling book, all that kind of stuff. But then, you know, YouTube hits two years ago. Two mm. years ago is all we've been on it. That's it, wow. And we were the number one playlist in the Gangster Redemption series because I came up with a way to, you know, you could literally, I read my book, narrating part, mm. online for free. Right. And just, so it's in the chapters, in the playlist. And people just, that's what blew me up. I mean, blew me up in the great, great story. You got to hear how I started YouTube. Vanity Fair. Right. You know who they are. They... Hire me to come up to a video in this. I had no YouTube. This is two years and three months ago. Okay. They come up. They said, listen, we want you to do a video. If it gets 150,000, 180,000 views in the little time period we know about YouTube, we're going to discuss a contract with you. You can come on up. Oh. I said, okay. Come back, do the video. Within a month, it's got a million views. Wow. And to what, this, what was the title? It's... Uh, Jules Robert uh, reviews mob movies or re crime movies heist. Right. If you looked it up, you could just Google Larry Lawton, uh, 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 YouTube, anything. Larry right. Lawton, Vanity Fair. Right. And uh, so I come back. I don't even have a YouTube at the time. Uh -huh. I come back. Starts doing good. I'm thinking, wait. And friends of mine in the industry say, Larry, they're going to call you. They're going to do something good. It's blowing up. It's going more and more. Never a thank you. And, you know, understanding YouTube like we know it now, it's a whole different thing. They do that. Never call me. Never call me. Well, in the contract, I, I did one video. I actually did two, but they needed my signature to get the release on the second. Okay. Adam, they never call me. Really? These pricks never fucking even sent me a bottle of scotch. Said, now, to this day, that video's got over 11 million views. Holy fuck. And, no, it's just that. It just, I'm so happy. Yeah. Because... In the meantime, I don't hear from them. People are contacting me because of this video and everything going crazy. I didn't have a YouTube. I started a YouTube mm. right then and there. And within one year, we hit a million. We're at a million four. And, uh, and the playlist, we had a high, high playlist. You know, I do gaming, do all the shit that, it, that goes along with it. 
But it's amazing how Vanity Fair pushed me into YouTube. And here's the greatest part. I get, a, I get an email from Vanity Fair. And a guy says, listen, Larry, can you sign the release on the other video? <laughs> this motherfucker's never asked me a thing, Adam. Not yeah. even like, how you doing? You know, great job. We changed staffs. Nothing. Right. Corporate. So they, after they do that, I go back. I get online. I find out LinkedIn. I pay for LinkedIn. I do the whole works. And I get the COOs, the CEOs. I get everybody's number and everything. I email them. I said, you owe me $491. Yeah, it was a liquor bill. But uh -huh. $491 last trip. I'll probably know when they pay me. And, and no, you do not have permission to do anything. Thank you for starting this, this YouTube thing I'm doing now. Right. I get an email back from one of his big wigs, COO, saying, sorry, Mr. Lawton, we fucked. Met. And they didn't say fuck, obviously. Right. We messed up. You know, heads were rolling. And, and we hope we can do business in the future or whatever. I will catch them. I'm looking at the growth rate. See, okay, from my perspective, I was pretty early in the whole mm. scheme of like doing content with rappers and all these viral people online and stuff. So then it was kind of crazy for me to see at one point that you have someone like Vanity Fair or GQ who they have a brand name because you know they used to have this killer business of being able to sell magazines and advertisements. Some of them still do. I'm sure they make some money off of selling print magazines and everything and airports and shit like that. But then they kind of come along and they take the fact that they are viewed as this big prestige brand and they start swooping in and taking all these rappers, all these cool young guys that I was doing content with and stuff. Not that I have any kind of ownership over their career at all, but then all of a sudden it's Roddy Rich talks about his $5 million diamond collection or whatever. And it's like, it's crazy because it's like, Holy shit, like Vanity Fair is all of a sudden pretending that they give a fuck about rappers because now they have to follow the fucking rules of YouTube, which is that rappers are the ones who get you views or criminals. Are the, never, ever, ever did they write a fucking profile about a guy like you in their magazine. They're writing fancy, you know, movie stars and whoever, but because they have to follow the incentives, they're out here doing content with jewel thieves and, and gang, or, you know, not gang members, but, you know, rappers and shit like that. Yeah. You, you are so right when I look back and I say, and then they recognize you. Like, all of a sudden, oh, we need him now. We want to collaborate with him later. But when they're Vanity Fair, you know, they own, they, in, the, in New York City, you know New York City, of course, the Freedom Tower, the old World Trade Center. Right. The whole 24th floor is studios. Right. Fucking studios. Mm. I mean, decked out. I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, the best of equipment, rooms, this stuff. And they got crews coming and going, cooking shows and all that. And they do our stuff. And then it's, eh, fuck you, you know. Because there's nobody in there who really gives a fuck, you know? Like, this business is, like, first generation because I'm still running it, you know? Vanity Fair, how many fucking times has it changed ownership? It's owned by a gigantic, mega, multinational corporation, whatever. It's like, you know... Connest Travel, yeah, yeah, the big, yeah exactly, you know, the big yeah. one. And, and what you say is so interesting and so cool because as a guy, uh, a friend of mine says, Larry, it's a shame. It's just because the, the corporations get so big that people don't give a fuck. Yeah. And they're just there for the paychecks anymore. Right. Where you and I, we want to see people go... I want to see... People get bigger all over. And I love the the brand of the, the YouTube for this reason. It's everybody helps everybody. I, I've helped guys with a hundred thousand and growing blasting who I am. Right. And then guys like you have me on it. It's 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 nobody there's no cutthroat shit. Yeah. I don't see it. Maybe I'm Whereas too new in it. If you're selling heroin and I'm selling heroin, then we're both vying for the same clientele if we're in the same city or whatever. Whereas with YouTube, everybody can ideally coexist. Yeah, exactly. Listen, the seven, what, seven billion people. Not that I ever sold people. heroin, but I assume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't sell it. I've done every drug in the right. book. But the, the, uh, I think with seven billion people on the earth and three billion people with YouTube, whatever the fucking numbers are stupid are, uh -huh. there's room for everybody, man. Right. Don't get, you know, and I enjoy it. I like to meet different guys, see their stories, like you mm. said, how they came up. You know, listening to your interview style on, on videos in the last week, I says, this fucking guy's a good interviewer. <laughs> and that's rare because I'm learning that part of it. Right. You know what I mean? Because I'm I fucking I'm aggressive. Kind when of I first started doing this, I was looking at Joe Rogan and I was like, fuck, he got he got 400. I think he had 400 episodes when I was starting 300 episodes. And like now he has like 1500 or some shit like that. And I was like, well, he's probably a, a lot better than I am at this right now. But if I fucking work my ass off, I can get to the long run 
faster. You know, I can like, if I really grind this out, then I can like learn how to do this better and better. It was something I was so confident that I was going to be able to get better at. And the thing is about me is I just rip myself to shreds in my head. Every time I say a fucking word wrong on this podcast, it's lingering in the back of my head. You mispronounce the fucking word, you know, like every little thing. Anytime I accidentally guide the conversation in a direction that I don't think is optimal, that just like really stands out to me. I'm always trying to correct my behavior on here to the point of my, my co-host can tell you that I can be kind of annoying in terms of getting annoyed by shit like, uh, you know, interrupting and all this stuff. I'm a little, a little too drill sergeant ish sometimes. That, Occasionally, very you, rarely. You, you, you know, that's really so true. I'm even learning myself, uh, you know, not understanding the interview. And I was a Howard Stern fan when I grew up. Mega mm, me Howard too, Stern yeah. fan. Oh, man. As a young kid, 11, 12, 13, that yeah, was my well, shit. Yeah, well, I was yeah. a little probably older. I'm sure I was mm. older. But, the, yeah, I mean, I was watching him since I was a kid 35 years ago, 40 years ago. Yeah. Whenever he started, I don't know, it was anniversary. He was on K-Rock and shit in New York City. Yeah. And he just fucking... But the way he did things, and he didn't give a shit, and the way... I watch YouTubers who do interviews, even myself. Now we do interviews with people and all that and stuff. But it's and funny because with Howard Stern, I never, I don't know if I ever looked at him and thought like, oh, I could do that. It seemed impossible. How the fuck do you get a job? You're on the radio station. He's a superstar, you know? Like, how could I have ever even thought about it? Now, if I had been a little bit more aspirational or like conscious of the fact that it is possible for you to do incredible things in your life, then I would have thought, fuck. Maybe if I intern at a radio station and then I get a, if I go to college for broadcasting, yada, yada, I was more like, nah, fuck that. <laughs> That's not possible. And, and, and you're 100% right because it's so, so different back in those days. And I remember those days. Yeah. It's where, you know, networks owned, a, there were five stations, NBC, CBS. Right. Now there's fucking a thousand fucking channels. There's YouTube, streaming services. You There's so many places to get your content out and, and do get a message out i always have mm. a message for content now how whatever it is it's fun it's fucking crazy right but don't do what i did man i mean you don't want to live the way i live like right. a fucking animal in the hole for three years mm. and all the crazy shit that you know you're stuck on crazy and anybody who's been there will tell you that right you know anybody and i've been there a long time i went there from 96 to 2007 but i'm getting out so I mean, I see guys come on your show, and I see you interview them, and they get 20 years, 20 years. And I know I get it so quick, their head spin. Quite, you know, just to let you know, today, you're going to make about 1,500 choices. Mm. Maybe as the boss, more, of course. Okay. The, the average inmate makes 100. Really? So this is when like he a gets, study that's been done on... Oh, many studies right. with, this, with, with psychologists. In fact, when I got out of prison, I couldn't even buy a fucking Subway sandwich. I get out, I got money in my pocket, great, things are great. I'm fucking, I'm excited. I had money in my commissary, they let me out. I was in Forest City, Arkansas, uh -huh. and I had to go to Florida for a halfway house. And I said, okay, I'll be on paper there, this is perfect. I wanna go on a, a bus. I've been on Con Air 16 times in fucking shit. I've been on the buses, in, I mean, I, I got frequent flyer miles on Con Air. Right, yeah. And so I wanna fucking go and see the world. So I get out. Now, this is 2007. And I get out, and, you know, I thought a Chrysler 300 was a Rolls Royce. If you remember when the <laughs> Chrysler 300s changed their back and all that shit, yeah. I didn't know this. But anyway, I get on the bus. They give me the bait. They drop you off. I stand. I, I'm driving. I see a, a girl. Of course, holy shit. I haven't seen one in so long. And she's nice. And I sit down next to her, and I said to her, this is talk about wild. Talk about the period I missed, 96 to 2007. So this is like within hours of you getting out? Hours. Okay. Now, when you talk about understanding, you know, you're intelligent. I got my degree in there. I do a lot of stuff, do law. Uh, I mean, just crazy. You know, read the paper, helped people, did a lot of legal work. I fucking get on the bus, and she has a Razor flip phone. Remember the Razor flip phones? Right, and you hadn't seen it? Haven't seen it. When I went to prison, we had a Motorola phone. I could beat you and make a fucking call. I could do a commercial. <laughs> right. Or the fucking, the things over the thing, you know, with a, with a wire hanging up, and you were a big shot. And right. That was stupid shit. But anyway, I get on, on the bus. I sit next to her, and I look at her, and I, she says, I said, can I see that? Think about how that sounds today. There's this fucking guy you know just got out of prison, fucking white as a ghost, at the hole, got the bobo shoes. You know it all works. Right. I fucking, she, she goes, yeah. I look at the phone. I said, how can these fucking hands touch these little buttons? 
I close the phone. I give it back to her. She's looking at me. I'm crazy. I'm doing this shit. Like, and they go, what the fuck you on mean? On the bus? Yeah, because I never been in shackles and handcuffs and eating on the plane for 13 hours with shackles and belly chains. Never could leave your hands. I'm free. Right. I fucking, people are looking at you, but I don't notice. I mean, I know people are looking when I'm threatened. You know, you can feel tension in a room, guys, who've been what I did. So anyway, I, the, she gets up and leaves the next stop. I got my own seat. Nobody's there. I don't know, you know. The bus driver gets on the radio and says, all right, everybody, we got 40 minutes to get something to eat. 40 minutes to get something to eat. We're getting back on the bus. I'm thinking, we're pulling for gas. Where the fuck are we going? You're pulling for gas again. What am I going to eat at a fucking gas station? When I went to prison, <laughs> you got beer, station. fucking, right, yeah. you know, cigarettes, <laughs> fucking, yeah. a pack, you know, whatever. You haven't seen the evolution of the gas station. Wow. I, I go, Adam, and I fucking see this gas station. It's got a subway. Yeah. It's got a fucking food mall. And I remembered Fat Jared, that fuck who's getting fucked in the <laughs> joint now. Wait, really? So, you think? He's definitely, depending on, unless, unless you went to a, a WITSEC. You know, witness protection program. Because he's so famous and like oh. he's got to be such a target. They got to fucking hide him away, right? You know, I guarantee they fucking fucking with him. I wow. saw when I when I was on the plane coming back, I saw Lou Pearlman when he was getting or when he got arrested. Really? And you know, Lou Pearlman was the guy with the with the boy bands and he yeah, fucked yeah, them in yeah. sync and all that and Backstreet Boys. I said, to him, I didn't give a fuck. I'm at the end of my sentence, too. I seen him on the bus. I said, you fat fuck, they're going to fuck you. And he's fucking looking like fucking, you know, he's in his fucking thing. He's fat fucking bro. Right. That creep motherfucker. So anyway, I get on the bus. I get off the bus, Adam. Yeah. To go eat. I end up getting on the line. And I got money in my pocket. I start shaking. True story. I couldn't take it. I'm looking up. There's all these choices to make. Mm. Now I'm feeling people fucking behind me, feeling my eyes. I fucking turn around. I went back on the bus. I sat in the back of the bus. I was crying like a baby. And I'm a big, crazy, mean guy, maximum security, but all that shit. Right. I end up calling the next stop. I call my cousin, who, thank God, she's a life coach, a psychologist. And she says, Larry, I was literally ready to do somebody, to anybody, to go back behind the bars. Right. I was, I was totally institutionalized. Mm. I call my cousin. She says, you have sensory overload. You have sensory overload. Get, did you know she was so right? I only felt good when I got back into the halfway house and they locked me up. Wow. And I, and I think about that psych and why they tell, and they try to help people when they get out. And I, I have a great program for that, but it's, it's more here. They give them a house, give them a job and this, and it's here. Right. You got to fucking change the mind. You can have a brother who gets out of prison. Uh-huh. And you want to help him. Man, you're his brother, man, whatever. So you got the new TV remote. You get the remote. You take it from him and say, look at this, bro, man. You know what he's thinking? You can't think I can fucking handle this shit in the back of his head. Mm. Instead of talking, I'm like, hey, let me show you this new system we got and, and play with it for a while. Do you think this is very common for people getting out of doing long bids in prison? Or Absolutely. Do you think you, you're because it sounds more extreme than the average person when you talk about not being able to go on the subway. Matter no, a lot of them can't eat. Most of them, really? even in the halfway house, they leave their groceries at a grocery store because they were so freaking the first time shopping. Wow. There was a CVS. They used to say uh, uh, whatever it was, Walgreens, and they used to give you four hours, Adam, to go get hygiene items when you got to the halfway house. <laughs> Today, you give me four hours, I'll play two holes of golf, get laid, fucking go have a few <laughs> drinks at the bar, and be back with my toothbrush or two whatever I gotta buy. Right. Four hours in prison. They gave you four hours because they knew that it was they gonna take everybody were, a while. Yeah. You go there and you think of the mindset. There's thirty types of toothpaste. <laughs> in prison they give you three days to pick aim or colgate on a fucking commissary list. Right. Here there's thirty types. Now I'm figuring out how much money I got in my pocket. What's this why is this good? What is this? You fucking it's sensory overload. Right. I remember I went there to the counter. And I, I had five dollars and twenty five cents worth of shit. Mm -hmm. Lady gives me a receipt, my bag, and I'm looking at her. So where's my fucking money? Where's my fucking money? Guy touches me, I almost hit him. I'm fucking thinking you beat me. That's the mindset. Forget the seventy five right. cents. She points to the end of the counter. The money came down that change shoot. 
I was so fucked up from 96. <laughs> yeah. And these guys were 20 years. I had friends of mine. I helped. Right. I just got a friend out 30 years. I picked them up. I helped them transition. My brother. Things. I, I, I have to do that. How do you transition, though? What does it take? Just time and... It takes you know, time. Just got to ease him into it a little bit. Totally. I went to an Orlando Magic game, and my buddy saw me, like, really tensing up all the time because I didn't want to be around those crowds without knowing. Mm. So, so you have to slowly build. Guys want to jump in. Listen, what's the first thing you do? You get out of prison, you know? You want to fucking get right back into the game or whatever mm. you're doing. Or anything. Even go slow, man. Because this is seven – like – when I left prison, when you leave from the hole or you leave from somewhere bad, there's almost a 70% chance you're going back to prison. That's crazy. It's fucking 70%. The recidivism rate is off the charts. It's 65 or 62. There's different studies on what it is. See, I have a friend, we were having this conversation because he does podcasts on here too, and his brother has been locked up for I don't know how long, seven years or some shit like that, and he's about to get out, and he's talking about how he's going to have him back on, the, on his podcast right away. And I was kind of like, are you sure that's a good idea? Because I don't know, like when you first get out, are you going to want to sort of like be eased into life before you sort of throw them into just being on camera in front of all these people? And what you just said kind of confirmed some of the skepticism I had there because I just, I'm not sure, but I wonder what that would do to somebody to all of a sudden be on this platform and you, the chat going crazy, talking about you and shit. Some of that stuff might be kind of hard to handle if you've, been locked up for that long right uh, absolutely not only that he will have fucking such sensory overload and he'll try to fight it the way he can you know usually guys who are in the prison were aggressive right you know so you can get aggressive you can snap quicker you can do something i mean you get through with the right people obviously like people do but you're really putting yourself in in a bad spot to right. do it you know i've seen guys so many go back and usually it's because they get right back you know we're like horses hmm. See, the difference between a human and a horse is no matter what happened to you in your past, right. you can get over it, you can forget it, you can be better for it, you can try things that whole different mindset. Hmm. A horse, I had horses. You wanted to stop a horse from taking you, fucking knocking you off the horse instead of putting a tie down? Cowboy gets on a horse, he takes a beer bottle, he fills it for fucking warm water. Hmm. Horse gets up, bam, smashes the bottle over the fucking horse's head. Stop animal cruelty. I'm not, right, no, yeah. none of that shit. It's like a brick. It's a hard thing. Couldn't even touch that horse. Okay. But the warm water, he thought it was his blood. The hoofs go out. You know, the horse won't do that. Huh. They're not going to fuck around because they'll never forget that. We are blessed as people to put shit that happened behind us to get on, move. But what happens with ex-cons is a lot of times they don't fucking... You know, they put aside how bad it was. You can't tell me anybody who's been in prison, because I was in prison, I was tortured, strapped down naked, beaten, all documented. Right. And tell me that life, no matter what the fuck's going on in your own life outside, that that life's better. Right. No guy ever gets out of prison and says, you know, I'm going back. Right. None. They'll say the craziest shit. I'm never going back. I'm dying in a gunfight. I'll kill a cop. I'll do whatever the fuck they want to say. Anything would be better than then going back. Right. But then they go back a year later because they again that 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 the luck, that blessing we have to put shit out of our heads, they didn't relate. But if they relate, if they fucking say, Man, you want to be told when to do, what to get up, when to fucking count, everything in your fucking life. Right. That alone says, What the fuck are you doing here? I can't do that again. Mm. And, I, and, I, and I'm in the streets my whole life. Mm. And I look at it as a, as, a, as a positive now to educate people, you know, more than anything. Listen, I, I, I've been on the shows. I've been through it. I was at maximum security prison my time. So I understand the game. But if we don't put it with a good message, anything we're doing. Right. And you have a good message. And I party. I love to have fun. <sighs> But I control it. I don't let it control me. Whatever it is. Right. Look at you. You work your ass off. Okay. I know how it is. I mean, I know what it is. And I, I, much respect because I know the hustle. I know the hardness. I know where it's at. Right. And to see you do it and the quality. Is <clears throat> well, you know, watching your story kind of made me think about this is that I very much like had the idea to do crimes to make money before I had the idea to like work or start a business to make money. You know, that just like made sense to me earlier in my life. I was dysfunctional in that way. And when I think about it, it's like 
it really takes a lot of skill to run a successful business. In comparison, being able to be a robber who just separates that business owner from their money by somehow getting in between the money and the person, it's a lot easier, you know? Like, when I was thinking about the jewelry stores and everything, I mean, it, it takes a lot of startup capital, of course, but it also takes just a lot of intelligence in order to be able to run this business and do the marketing and have a successful jewelry store or whatever. But then there's you know, another route into making money, which is you can kind of just insert yourself in between that. And I think about how that's like, like I know a guy who's a scam artist, basically. It's like a friend of a friend. And you know, he just can convince people to just give him 10, 15,000. <laughs> and then he doesn't do anything. He just rips them off. You know, like the actual really smart, talented person is the person who can get you to give him $10,000 and then he actually invests it and makes money for you. He's the opposite. He, can, he, he has the part of the puzzle where he can get you to come up out the money. He just doesn't have the full thing, which would make him an actual successful business person if he could Instead make you more money, artist. you know? <laughs> and I mean, I, 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 that's not even to say anything about all the credit card fraud I used to do back in the day, which is the same thing, you know? It takes, takes a lot of fucking intelligence to run a Walmart. It doesn't take that much intelligence to fucking be the guy who walks in there with a credit card and walks out with a bunch of shit, you know? Well, you know, there, there's truth to that, but then it's truth to... But, the, but you it's could do that without without yeah. without getting caught for so long right and because what you were doing when you really think about it there's so there's so many levels of crime but what you were doing was actually the most difficult level that you could play the game on you it, I, you know when the fbi got caught me you know they i was caught by the big boys the major k squad fbi right. all that kind of shit and uh the guy was matt mullen wasn't a bad guy either remember him and he says why didn't you quit why didn't you quit? I mean, you have money, horses, limousines, cash, every, power, everything. I go, because it was a high like I never had in my life. Mm. And p anybody who says that it isn't is wrong to this day. I mean, and I've, I've done everything in the book. There's no, you know, you try to search for it. There's no searching for that high. That right. high is the best high in the fucking world. Right. It's like getting over when, and I, and here's the, I, I'll never say I will say it was okay to do what I did. Let me get that out of the way. Uh -huh. But the people I robbed wouldn't want to testify. They made money. You know, every rural jewelry store I robbed had insurance. Right. Now, one time the FBI comes to me and says, hey, Larry, man, you got $1.2 million out of that store. I said, I got about eight hundred out of that store. Mm. Well, the guy was putting 400000 in extra insurance money. So who hated me? was the insurance companies. Right. Because they're fucking getting whacked for the money. These people are all selling their inventory. If you own a jewelry store and you got it insured properly and a guy walks in and wipes you out, right. you just sold your whole fucking jewelry store. Yeah. Good, bad, or indifferent. And that's why I never I never even occurred to me to feel bad for the people whose credit card accounts <laughs> we are running out because Good, you the, get it back from the bank, right? I mean, unless you're a fucking idiot, right? And, and I know it's not right, you know what I mean, yeah, to say yeah. it. Oh, okay, go out, <laughs> rob shit, as long as it's in insurance. Right. I'm not here to say that. I'm here to say there, there's ways, and, you know, what I did was very rare because I went for so long, and I was so good at what it, and they and the insurance companies did want me. Mm. That's the, the, the difference. And, you know, and I, the, you know, the reason they fucked with me so hard is because I wouldn't tell. Mm. You know, I don't believe in that. And, and I'm not going to get into the rat and game and all that bullshit, and I know, and all this shit. To me, if you and Ad Adam and Larry do a crime, we're selling weed, and you get caught, and you say, fucking, Larry's the man, and that's a fucking rat. Right. A guy's mother gets robbed in his house, and she calls the police. That's not a rat. If you willingly enter into a criminal conspiracy with somebody else, you should treat them by the same rules that you would want them to treat you, just the same way that, like, as a law, generally law-abiding citizen, I expect that sort of respect. It's like you enter into a different code once you break the rule in which you're not going to hand over information to the people whose job it is to catch you. You know, it was so funny. I even got a conviction. You're so right because the way you explained it was good because it was like more technical. Mine is if you fucking do a crime with me and you're telling me you're a fucking snitch right. crime, you did it the right total criminal conspiracy i mean legally but because you know, sometimes like, people try to make this argument of like oh well this guy snitched or this guy ratted out his friends or whatever but he's not a gangster or he's not a he's not a real criminal he shouldn't have been in this position in the first place it's like okay whatever like he's not a he's not a gangster fine but 
if you tell on your friends, it's like you don't need to like buy into the code of gangsterism to think that telling on your friends when you get caught doing some shit that you willingly people at home know that I'm probably referencing the six nine situation right here. But he, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, he, yeah. he ordered a murder and then told on the guy who did the shooting, who didn't even come close to hitting the target. But you know, he told on the guy who did the shooting of the murder that you ordered. Like you put him in that position. So I don't need to be a fucking blood or a crypt to say that that's not something I respect. I, absolutely. You know, and, and I, I often talk about that, whether it's a mob life or not, and who knows who, everybody. I don't trust them. Fuck it. I have a shirt. It says, three can keep a secret if two are dead. Hmm. And when you think about that shirt, it's a fucking great shirt. Right. But the uh, when a person goes that, I think it's in their heart. When I didn't rat, and... I protected my brother. My brother was the John Rodriguez. They said I said there was a John Rodriguez. Mm. Well, they went and looked for John Rodriguez. Six years later, I get a conviction from the feds. I go to trial for filing a false statement. The same crime that Bill Clinton fucking got. Right. You know, which is 18 U.S.C. 1001, which is filing a false statement with the federal government. So they gave me another 12 months, but they ran a concurrent. I didn't give a fuck and all that's a whole story. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I look at that and I say, now... If it's because I live the right life now or whatever that I'm not telling or, or you know, I, I, you know, it, listen, you know, Sammy Gravano wanted to come on my show, you know, and all that. And I know, I know Michael very well. I know what Michael did, you mm -hmm. know, Francis and those guys. And it's just something I, I can't do with Sammy. And I'll tell you why it's not that, listen, what he did with Gotti and how people justify their own shit. I don't give a fuck anymore, but you put a lot of people away that didn't belong to be put away, mm. you know, just because they were there and you knew it and it was hot. And I don't know, I, you're all in that game, I can't do it. And then think it's okay. That's, listen, I, again, those days where I was a fucking nut are over. Right. But the days of my, me not feeling like, why the fuck, you know, why do I have to be around these people or this person? Do you want to be around a person you know you can't trust his word? Right. No. I don't give a fuck. Life's too short. If I know I can't trust your word, know it. You fucked somebody you know, you do it just to do it, and then you want to do business with me, whatever. How can you trust it? Right. And if you do trust it, you get burned. I think it's shame on you. I often tell people that. Right. You know. So here's what I'm wondering is what led up to you actually getting caught? Because you have been robbing these jewelry stores, specifically jewelry stores, or were you ever dipping and dabbling and robbing other No, we businesses? robbed other things as a crew, as a bob, but no, my big, big thing was jewelry stores. Right. And and people ask, why jewelry stores? There's the money there. That's all the shit. You know, in, yeah. if you remember about three, four years ago in France, they robbed $134 million in a briefcase. Guy walks in, puts two guards, the Ritz Carlton in France, puts two guys, guards down, Puts the guy down, takes the briefcase, walks out, gets in a car and goes. 134 million, still never caught. Wow. You can't rob 134 million in cash anywhere without having fucking trucks and <laughs> all this shit. Fill the whole room. Exactly. Yeah. Even if you take the 30% I got on the dollar. Right. 40 million? Where are you going to carry 40 million? How are you going to carry 40 you million? You only get 30% of your own yeah. robberies because you're a part of this mafia? Yeah, unit? well, it depends. That's You know, you have to sell the diamonds. So if you rob a million oh, dollars yeah, in yeah. diamonds, that's not the million dollars. There's a wholesale and then there's right. a criminal fee <laughs> and whatever you want to call it. So, but yeah, so okay, 30. just from the, the what, what the fuck they call it, the fence, how much, if you had a, a million dollars worth of diamonds, how much were they going to give you? They bet 300, 350. Okay. You know, and then so you're, and you're kicking back a percentage of it to who? Yeah, your boss in, in the mob. How the fuck can they possibly expect you to be honest about that? Well, you know, you, you will, and I'll tell you why. I used to be. I didn't give up a big... You, you give up a set percent. It's not what it is. They don't question it. That's it. Roughly 10% or whatever right. it is. The reason you don't fuck around... Listen, I'm associated with the Gambinos. That's who I was associated with because I needed to be. Because if not, everybody who knew I was robbing is going to take me hostage, and they're going to get your money. Hmm. Trust me. And when I did what I did, I tortured people. I did bad things. I'm going to get your money. Every all the got tough guys. I don't give a fuck what he does to me. I'm never going to say something. Hmm. Trust me. You'll say whatever the fuck it needs when the fucking hot irons on you. Or whatever I heard that the fuck story. It is. Yeah. So true, <laughs> and it's the truth. And I look back, and I've never seen anybody stay up. I mean, they can't. Right. But you know. So when I look at him, like, uh, uh, fuck, you got me going. Uh, 
Yeah, where were we? <laughs> <laughs> uh, talking about Robin stores, right? Oh, no, we'll forget it. I love it. This is great. I was smoking. Oh, the kickback to the boss. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the reason I wouldn't do that, Adam, sorry about that, yeah. smoking. No, it's fine. Yeah, we got these. Yeah, do more. Yeah, yeah. here with you. Do weed. Yeah, do weed. <laughs> Sounds like my it's 35 style. minutes in. That's plenty of time, right? Oh, perfect. That's plenty of level-headed talk. No, because, well, anyway, I want to just look about that. So you take that and you, you I also got your present here. See that? Yeah, the good. Too. I can't tell if it's chocolate or cigars. Oh, these I'm are hoping the, it's cigars. The best Ooh. cigar of the year, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. I just signed my own cigar deal. I, love I have it. my own cigar coming out. Right. It's fucking hot. Nobody does that. I'll leave it. The third largest company in the world partnered with me. It's called the Crooked Diamond. Wow. It's fucking um, it blends all this coming out at the end of summer. I got some fucking amazing. So they said here they give me. I rep them. Come on, fuck it. We're gonna, I said, I'm going to give you the best. These are the cigar of the fucking year. So I'll give you a box. We'll smoke a cigar, man. Let's do it, man. I've, um, I've never really uh, been introduced to the cigar thing. I hear you don't inhale it. No. You know, I was I was on with Dopey Yolo. Yeah, yeah, I heard. Fucking funny He's as shit. He's a good shit. guy, yeah. A really nice guy. He didn't smoke a cigar. He goes, holy shit. This is fucking good. And, and I said, don't inhale it, man. You inhale this. You're fucked. Yeah? Why? Well, just give I, you I the stupidest fucked. head rush? I mean, you can get, you get a head sick. Rush? I've seen guys get sick. But so what do you do? You just hold it in your mouth? Well, you, you, you flavor it. You'll see what I mean. You, when you smoke a cigar, it's got the best feeling in the world, man. Yeah? And especially the reason I got my blend, and I've been smoking cigars for 40 years, mm. was to fucking... This is, these cigars, look at these cigars, man. You're going to love this cigar. You're going to be a cigar smoker. Oh, Lord. Oh, that look great. I'm going to split it open and put some weed in it. <laughs> Everyone, they want to do that. I said, please do that, but don't do it with this cigar. Okay. It's a fucking good cigar, man. <laughs> I have a torch lighter, too. I see all these fucking billionaires and shit doing this, and I never really understood it. I'll tell you why. I, I, it's, the, it's the most relaxing shit you ever do. It's relaxing? Man, I could, could do... And I do like I love weed too. I love okay. that. So we there. Yeah. You need a torch. You can't bick this. Ah, uh, you're better off with a torch. We well, can bick it, but here, right. be easier. Well, I'm I'm scared to inhale it. Don't don't inhale. Just just you get it. And... What do I do? Like is I just suck it into my mouth? Pause. That, like you pull in. Yeah. Don't swallow. Don't pull, don't, don't don't inhale. Just pull in. Now blow out. Take your time with it. Let it. That's right. Sort of just like it smells like going to Vegas. It smells like a casino. It tastes like a casino. That's why it's like a casino. It's cigar. It's the cigar to you. That's why. And these are yours. You give me a guest. Do whatever you want. And you smoke them. You, you want one? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, big man. <laughs> he ain't ever met you nicotine. Know, he didn't like. Punch it. You know, punch punch it. it. <laughs> You might want to take it from me because I don't know how much of a future I got with this. Right. On this podcast specifically. Yeah. Right. How about that? You good with that? Oh, Josh left. He probably wants to. Yeah, I'll smoke this. Uh, but wow, yeah, that's that's fun. I'm gonna I'm gonna spend more time with it later. Oh yeah, you want I'm watching to Kiki this? smoke Can I like it this now. With you? You like that? Uh, yeah, I, I smoke mostly blunts. I'm not really into smoking weed without tobacco. Oh really? That's yeah. pretty cool. Never thought of that. I know. It's a weird thing. But you could smoke the the cigar and the and the weed back to back. What the fuck were we talking about? We got sidelined <laughs> so hard again. <laughs> no, we got talking about getting the Rob. And the reason you well, if you want to keep him rolling, that's a good th thumbnail with him the joint though. <laughs> <laughs> the the reason you didn't fuck with them is because you need them, right? And you want to be. Honest, you don't want something to happen somehow, some meeting you're dealing. And I was dealing with a different family to get rid of my diamonds. I don't want some meeting to happen and say, Yeah, we've been giving Larry, you know, 
350, 400 grand every week, and you only been fucking tipping three grand, you know? Mm. Like it was a 30 grand, you know, totally. So you can fuck around, around a little bit, but it's got to be close. Yeah, you, I didn't because it's not worth it. Mm. I mean, that's my protection. But is it not really like that for many guys anymore? Like, is it much more of a free for all these days? Well, certain places, and yes, New York, there were areas I couldn't rob. I mean, people were protected. They paid the right people, and if they fucking found and they have the underground, you know, I got through my diamonds rid of my diamonds through mob, and that was my fences. Okay. So and they were gone. <laughs> I mean, wiped out. Shit was melted down. I mean, really big shit, you know. Mm. And and it, how do you? Most jewel robbers, most big criminals, get busted through their fence. Really? How do you get rid of it? Yeah. Tiffany's was robbed ten years ago, whatever it was. And they get caught fucking selling a diamond in Harlem for crack. Mm. Obviously, it was a thirty thousand dollar ring. They're fucking doing shit, and they then they find it. Then they figure it out. The cops figure out where is that coming from. I wish I knew the motherfuckers. I'd have gave them a million for the load, sold mm. it for two million. But even for big professionals like you, it usually the fence is how people get caught. Yeah, or like mine was great police work. I mean, the FBI mm -hmm. caught me, and don't ever, don't anybody ever tell you the FBI <coughs> can't do their shit. Mm -hmm. They got all the money in the world. They got all the resources. If the FBI wants to fuck with you and get a witness here from an F-16 from New York and fucking California and mm -hmm. do an F-I, they'll get the fucker here. Right. It's the feds. Local police don't have the money or the resources, and uh, the per person on the crime is not going to give the information the next one like they do. The FBI is a machine. Right. You know, so people don't even, oh, fuck the FBI. Listen to me. Trust me. The FBI is fucking good. Right. So, and, so you got to the point where you would just, like, okay, leading up to, how, when, would you, when would you describe as your golden years, your, your run that was really of interest to them? Oh, I was fucking going from 1989 to 96. Six and a half years of fucking whack power, limousines, homes, horses, making mo open businesses. Like you said, we always had that business brain, even right. when I was bad. Obviously, you, you, you turned it in earlier than I did. I was 34 years old when I went to prison, right. and I got out at 46 years old. But those years were like 89 to 90, uh, 96 fucking crazy broads, fucking coke, fucking pie. This is South, this is South Florida right? in those times. And you heard about the stories about that crazy shit. Right. You're talking about drugs, fucking flying, kilos. You get a kilo for 10,000. Mm. You know, if you knew somebody, you sell it in New York for 25,000. But you didn't really mess with that side no, of the business No, no, I had a partner, I mean, in the, with the mob guys. He was drugs. I was... Uh, Boosting, robbing, muscle, that kind of stuff, arm robberies, trucks. And the key here is that, well, the key here, I never ever, even when he said to me, La, I know you got the connections down there because I'm in South Florida now. He's in New York. Come on, give me, give me, give me keys, all the keys you can, 25,000 each. I, mean, I could have brought him 100 keys and made 15,000 a key like in like two seconds. Right. You know, and I never did it. And I don't know what it was why or you know it was not my thing and he i've i saved the drug dealer's life from the mob they want to kill him but it, it's it's crazy to say i never did it because i think the laws were so strict that you know they were looking for the drug dealers and it was always a conspiracy here's the difference you and me rob a fucking store tomorrow mm. five years later nobody says anything you could tell the world you robbed that fucking store. Five years? Yeah, it's statute of limitations. That's the, okay. That's the statute. Interesting. Most crimes are five, a few seven, only if, like, murder, espionage, kidnapping, those are no statute of limitations. Oh, kidnapping too, okay. Yeah, kidnapping I as well. Know that. So, but in the, with the drug game, Adam and I are doing, you know, we sell 100 keys, we make some money, we're out of it. But Johnny down the street calls Adam four years later and says, hey, Adam, can you get me any of this shit? You know, no, man, I'm out of that business. They were recording the call. Now you, your extension, your conspiracy goes another five years. Wow. So they could keep stringing your ass along with a phone call. I had a guy with a life sentence I was with. He fucking was out of the pot business, mega pop. Now I look at this today. Talk about sad. He's dead, but mm. fucking legal shit, and he was in for life. And it was bails and all this shit. No, forget that, though. He fucking gets in a drug conspiracy. A guy says, hey, Mike, can I use your sailboat? 
Mike Sorgo, I'll never forget him. He's dead now. And he says, can I use your sailboat? He says, no, man, you can't use my sailboat. I'm not in that business anymore. They continued the conspiracy when they were watching that guy saying he was still involved, but he just denied that trip and all this shit. Mm. And they continued five years. They busted him. You know, his last drug deal was eight, nine years earlier. Wow. Never fucking talked to him. That one phone call. I helped him with his legal work. Put him in prison for life. Wow. Life. Pot, no less, back then. Is that what boggled the mind? If it no. doesn't boggle people's mind, I don't know what the fuck they're thinking about. How much of the time when you're locked up for 12 years are you think, or was it 12? Yeah. Yeah. 11 I, straight. I mean, I went in, I had four 12 year sentences right. run concurrent, and I beat a life sentence. Well, how much of that time is spent thinking about how unfair the justice system is? Because you're a person who's kind of extended that fight. Usually, you know, sometimes you see guys, they get out. They talk a big, bunch of big talk about prison reform and shit, and then they usually don't really uh, stick with it too much because once you're out of there, it's like, who gives a fuck? When it's your daily reality, it seems like the most important thing in the world because clearly the system ain't right, you know? Well, you know, I've been in, I've been in that since I was in there. I used to see young kids. To this day, I've been doing this for 15 years, fighting for prison reform, how to fix the fucking system. The system's so broke, it killed three of my friends. Right. I mean, I'm in there, and some sad, very sad stories. And, you know, when I got out of prison, I said to myself, I got to fucking continue doing this, because I saw young kids come to prison. Mm. I don't care how tough they fucking think they are. They come to prison, it's a different world. Some of them are lucky they get out alive. Some of them are lucky they don't get out with hepatitis or HIV or, 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 or say, you know, get fucked more up on drugs. You know, the system is so broke that you take a kid who's 20 years old, he robs a bank, Adam. Uses a note. What right. does he rob a bank for? Forget cash because he's a drug addict. He fucking blows the cash. He gets fucking caught again. He gets, goes to prison for five years. You think, okay, five years, no big deal. He's in prison for, for the first time. He gets, what does he do? He does drugs. There's more drugs in prison. You hear this all the time. Right. It's so true. More drugs in prison on the street. Now this kid, what does he do? He does drugs. The prison system, they give him a piss test. He gets caught. He goes to the hole. He loses his commissary. He loses his phone. He loses his uh, uh, visit, visitations. All connected to the real world is gone. Anybody was connecting with to get a job when he gets out, when he's clean in four years, he's going to get out, all this. None of that now. Mm -hmm. Now the kid goes to the hole, he comes out, nothing, period. Hangs with the gangs, he might, still needs money, still needs drugs. We, and I'm going to say we as a society, we never helped that kid with that, at least try to help that kid with a drug addiction. Right. Because if we did, we could have maybe prevented a life sentence kid. We could have prevented this kid. Because now he technically has got life. Right. He's now either got to maybe stab somebody because they're sitting in their section, or he's got to fucking uh, uh, sell his ass, do whatever the fuck he's going to do. He gets out at 25. He's now no scared of jail. So now he's a dangerous man out there, maybe a little bit more. Right. And maybe has, you know, hepatitis, you know, whatever. And he's going to do the same thing because you never fucking helped his addiction. Mm. Help that addiction. And I'm all for everything with control. And I believe that in life. But, and I've got out of control. Of course, look at what my life, my life is no fucking, you know, father fucking knows best. Right. My life is a pretty fucked up life. But it, but it's a life that always said you can do better. You can try to get, you know, even when I robbed, I, I threw parties for fucking a thousand people. Back in the day. Right. I fucking, you know, you can read about man, T-shirts, bounce houses, car, car shows, trackless trains, fucking thousand hot dogs, thousand fucking hamburgers, 40, 40 cases of beer, 10 kegs of beer, 40 cases of soda, clowns, Barney. Does part of you wish that you had just kind of kept that money and just stopped robbing earlier? No. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would be. That's what I'm thinking. You, you, you think you would, but you wouldn't. Right. You know, everybody thinks they're going to do that. And every gangster, oh, why didn't you put the money away? John Gotti once said, if I find a bank with a 401k, I'm going to kill him. But they don't fucking retire. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, it's not what you thought about. Right. Now, I am so lucky, Adam, because 
if I w I had to set up a robbery for a kidnapping with dynamite on the girl, fucking eight Stern Jewels, South Beach, Florida, you probably know it. Fucking the eight Stern Jewels, which is in the Fountain Blue Hotel. It was an eight Stern, had 13 million. 12, 13 million. Called my guys in New York. Yeah, we're going to get your money right away. Boom, we'll give you two million. You're going to have to get out of town, whatever. We were going to put dynamite on the fucking guy at his house, keep his family hostage in the house. Go in in the morning, pass the time safes, whack the whole fucking thing, boom, tell him if you ever move them, I'll blow them up, you know, step out of the car, you hit a cop car, you honk your horn, I'll fucking step out of the car and just hit the fucking button. Right. So he's, you know, that this plan was that close. I was literally hiding in the fucking bushes of the house. We followed the guy to his house and everything. Thank God a dog came from a neighbor or some shit and sat us and... It spooked us. It, you know, the feeling don't get right. Cancel the whole robbery. We had Molotov cocktails set up for distractions. We had the whole fucking thing planned to a T. How long have you spent planning something like that? That was about a month. Right. And it was a big payoff, $13 million, and my end is going to be $4 million or so. It's got to be a crazy feeling putting in that much fucking work on something when you know that if you're acting rationally you might just have to decide not to do it at some point right if it's too risky that was one of my strengths uh being able to call off a robbery as much mm. as do a robbery calling off that spending all the money it was all me everything in that way was the best thing i ever did because if i did that there's no statute of limitations it's kidnapping i could i could have been i would have got light i mean there's not even a question i was facing i i beat a gun charge right a 924c it's a gun charge the felon using a gun in the commission of a felony. For the first robbery, you get five years. Every robbery after that, you get 20 years. Mm. That's 65 years plus the years. I'm not living to 100, you know, he is in prison. Right. So, you know, there's no way you could fucking get out. It's crazy that kidnapping is considered that serious of a crime, you know? Well, you just throw was, somebody in the trunk. Doesn't seem like that big a deal. I think that was close to Lindbergh baby back in the day and all mm. that kind of shit in the in the 30s. I guess that happened uh, and the kidnapping and all that bullshit. Right. I think that was like you know political, if you want to call it that. I mean, how, if you think that's weird, how do you think pot is a life sentence back when it was? Because mm. of weight. Right. Does anybody give a fuck about pot? I know. I know. I don't. I could care less. That's so strange. <laughs> but you know, think, ever think about how like you you really can't just legalize drugs because if you legalize drugs, then what are you gonna have? You're gonna have fucking all these fancy slick marketing campaigns behind like fentanyl and meth and ecstasy pills and shit like that. Like it's really hard to imagine what like legalized drugs, like actually fully legalized drugs, looks like. I I I would be all for it. Yeah. People go, Larry, you, you know, you're pretty, you know, you're a pretty rational guy. You're pretty, no, they've done already right now. And I think it's Switzerland or Sweden. One of them have, right, all but they have like drugs illegal. I think they have like doctors administrating that kind of stuff. Though, well, right. I, I'm not saying how they do it. Yeah. But to criminalize it. They can't it, be selling is, ecstasy like fucking gas station sex pills. I, you know, I think <laughs> if we educate people, Adam, I think we, we could, it, it wouldn't matter. Mm. You know, think about this. When, I don't know. You, you don't remember this. When I grew up, they had an ad campaign in, in schools. They had a fucking pan, and they had an egg frying in the fucking pan. This is pan. your brain on drugs. This is your brain on drugs, you know, fucking thing. I'm 38. So. Okay, you probably remember a little yeah, of that, I right? Know. Yeah. It, and when you think about that, it was something. Do you know what they got today? Nothing. Not a fucking thing. Not anything to say. At least educate. Fucking educate them to say, hey, listen, this is what drug, this is what marijuana could do. It could be well, could be good. You're 18 until you develop. It wouldn't be good. Whatever the fuck it is. They don't have any kind of anti-drug no. ads anymore? Damn. No. And I speak in schools. Really? I mean, that's what I do. I have a program, the Reality Check program is the number one program in the country right now. Really? It's it's used in court systems. It's used in police stations. So it, what, what what's the program? It's like a series it, of videos or no, something? No, it's my four-part... I, I developed the four-part program. Okay. And the program is what I did, then my life, what you will lose, and then avoiding dissolving bad associations. So develop, I developed it when I got out of prison. After a guy comes to me, kid says to me, hey, he goes, Larry, I need a favor. 
Mm. The fuck? You want me to break somebody's legs? Just leave me the fuck alone. I'm just out of prison. <laughs> I'm 46 years old, you know? Yeah. He says, no, nah, I caught my 16-year-old smoking weed. He told me, fuck you, Dad. Where have you ever been? I said, your kid told you that? I'll talk to your kid. He says, thanks. I go to his house. I get pictures together, which to this day, I don't know how I got them because they were me with gang members, fucking mafia guys. And you can't do that today. You can't take them like you did back in my day. Mm. And I fucking go in. I take the pictures to the kid. He's a big kid, but I can be intimidating. I sit down. I said, you told your father where the fuck he's been? Let me show you where the fuck I just came from. Mm. Spoke to the kid for two hours. The kid was fucking blown away. Kid doing all the shit kids do, and you know what I mean. 16-year-old mm. kid. Dad says, to him, gives me 100 bucks. I'm just out of prison. I don't have money. He goes, can I give you a number to other people? I said, sure. Gives me the number. I get a phone call about a month and a half later from Gene Bannish. This lady says, Larry, I'm Gene Bannish with the court. Judge Ryman would like to see you. I ain't seeing no fucking judge. She goes, no, Judge Ryman in the court up in Brevard County would like to see you. I said, you got a warrant? Because I ain't seeing no judge. You know, I know the law. Right. The fucking lady goes, no, no. The judge heard you help kids. Mm. Wants to talk to you. I fucking put together a PowerPoint. Now I'm out of prison very, very short time. I didn't even know how to work a PowerPoint. My nephew, who since died, sadly, he, he uh, helped me put a PowerPoint together. Mm. I put the PowerPoint together. I go in on a Friday. I show what I do, talk to kids. Straight deal. The real deal. Don't fuck with them. It's kids spot bullshit a mile away. Mm. I'm not going to bullshit people. I'm too old. And I told the kid, I told the judge, the program showed it. She goes, thank you. Would you like to stay for the meeting? I said, no, what the fuck? I want to be in here. I'm out of here. Get out of here right away. We find out years later I wasn't supposed to be there. They were supposed to have bailiffs there because I'm a felon. Mm. And I was on paper. So I ended up getting a phone call Monday. Monday. Judge, uh, the lady, Jean Bannis, goes, uh, Mr. Lawton, I'd like to give you a heads up. The judge just sentenced two people to your program. What fucking program? I just told you what I do. What fucking program? Right. From there, I developed it into this four-part program that has now been recognized on the floor of the United States Congress. Mm. And in, it's used at police stations all over the country to help kids. It's, it's a video. They'll give it to them on a card. So I, I developed, they use it in schools, court system. A kid, even 25-year-old, 30-year-olds, they get caught DUI. They sent some reality check program. They got to watch this video, take a test, fucking show the court that they, they fit. It's like a DUI school. And they got to pay you? Bullshit. Oh, yeah. How does that feel? Feels fucking great. Yeah? You know, I, I, I really de developed it and didn't make money for 10 years more than that because I was giving it away more than anything. You know, I have right. a foundation. And when I partnered with the cigar company, the part of the proceeds go to the foundation to help kids. That's so. You know, and, and I think that's the only way to run shit. Because if we don't do something, and we got to take care of ourselves, we got to live uh, fucking right. All right. But then try to do what you can do. What kind of shit do you say to a young person? Who's it aimed at? It's aimed at a young person getting into crime, getting well, in trouble? It's actually aimed at anybody who's making a bad choice for the first time. Because mm -hmm. when I tell my story about how I robbed and, and, and was the biggest jewel robber and everything else in this whole entire fucking thing, that fucking goes whoa you know this fucking shit is real right then i tell him uh uh what's gonna happen to you jail prison guy get his ass cut from the top of his anus to his scrotum and femoral fluid is found out. Oh, i was Lord. in prison when a guy comes and says man you worked in the infirmary because we heard the screaming at the night before and then to get up in the morning there's crime scene tapes in fucking the prison in the fucking prison land across the cell uh. And the fucking guy goes, you got to read this, man. He comes back and he sits at the table waiting for Chow to be called. And it said, inmates in his name, anus, was cut with a sharp object from the top of his anus until his scrotum Ugh. and seminal fluid was found. These two guys raped this kid, cut his ass. To, and you don't want, everyone, will, first thing they'll say is, why would you do that? Do you want a tight ass? No, it's about power. It's about fucking total control. Rape is not about sex. Oof. I can't get an erection to rape somebody. 
Really, I'm not talking me playing with my fucking girl and all that. Right. I'm talking. I couldn't get an erection to rape somebody or anything. It just that's not. It can't excite me. I'm not that fucking wacko. Uh -huh. You know, I'm talking about a real rapist that that's doing it for power and control, and that's what happened to this kid. And I tell him, you don't think that can happen? I show his picture. The kid is fucking at that time 22 years old, good looking kid in the wrong place. Happened. Does it happen every day? No, you know, you know, people tell you stories. I, I could tell the, I live there. Right. Happens, things happen, people get stabbed. I watch people get fucking killed over $5. Jeez. Or a book of stamps, is what, $5 in the joint. So it, it's a place that, you know, people ask me and they always say, oh, it's a bad neighborhood. I said, listen, man, I lived in a bad neighborhood. I lived where everybody was a murderer, a fucking hitman, a fucking mafia boss, a fucking drug lord, a fucking arm robber like me, you know, tying people up all over the fucking place. Right. So, you know, it's not a place that you think, oh, good neighborhood. So when they say, oh, there's a bad neighbor, I get it. You can get killed anywhere. You know that. I mean, fucking get killed. I don't care where you are. Right. But I don't look at it like that anymore. Yeah. Definitely. So, how do you uh, how do you explain this? Or you said it's aimed at who? Well, 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 you take the program itself. Yeah. You know, so the program, if even you, anybody got a DUI, I they have to take this program, they have to take a test. On it's all done online. It's all automated. Right. So when we first came out, I actually had DVDs. You know, mm. fucking DVDs. Does anybody use that word anymore? No. No. I Not don't really. think a computer comes with a fucking DVD. No, it anymore. doesn't. I, somebody gave me a DVD recently, and I realized that I have no way to play a DVD. Yeah, uh, you'd have to buy extension and all this bullshit yeah. would have done. But get the fuck out of here. I'm no, not going to do that. Yeah. No, it's not happening. <laughs> no, thanks. So I started it with a DVD. They had to take the DVD. They had to watch it. They had to fill out a test, and they had to pass it. And they sent it to the clerk of the court, and they case gets done that's right. part of their case so now it's just done auto automatically i mean they, they 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 buy it goes to their email they get a link they get a passcode i'll send you it and what makes you feel like it's effective like what what signs do you get that this is making a difference great question we know it's successful because eastern florida state college in florida did a quantitative analysis on it oh, really? and we have the highest success rate of any program in the country we have a 43 percent increase in education, 31% increase in class attendance, 70% increase in attitudes, and 90% of the kids didn't go back to jail or get in trouble again. Wow, that's, that's impressive. fucking numbers. Yeah. And you know, I, I, those numbers were, Congress loved the numbers. That's why I was wrecking on all this shit. And they said, well, that's great numbers. You must be proud of yourself. I said, yes, I'm proud of that, but I'm prouder of the number I don't know. How many kids watched my video? And fucking then didn't go rob the fucking car. Get in the car with the guy with the fucking, you know, bags of blues or whatever. <laughs> didn't get into the car with the right. guy with fucking a half ounce of coke and they all get busted. Right. Didn't get in the car that they went out. How many watched it and didn't do that? I don't know that number. Mm. But I like that number. Because it's, it's kind of crazy when you see somebody get caught for something stupid, like doing a robbery or, you know, a random murder or whatever it is. It's like part of you thinks... They must have been told. They like most people have influences that are telling them that this is not okay. Whether it's your parents or your teachers or whatever, it's like they, you know. And I'm somebody who got in all kinds of trouble, and I felt like nobody ever, nobody ever offered me another way, or I didn't know like what what I was supposed to be doing with my life or whatever. But when I look back on it, I'm like. I mean, you did have a lot of influences <laughs> in your life telling you what the right thing to do was to go to college, to fucking get a job, go to your job, whatever. So for me, it's like when I hear about something like a course to kind of get people back on the right track, my initial reaction is to kind of feel skeptical. Like, But when you really think about it, it's like probably a lot of these people haven't had somebody just telling them straight up how to stay out of trouble or giving them like practical advice about it. Like it's kind of, I don't know, like because even with somebody like you, I mean, I'm sure you had people offering you, you know, trying to get you to take a better direction even early on even if you kind of well it, I, right? my, my neighborhood I, I was with gangsters so no mm. you looked up to the gangsters so that, that, kind of that fully inundated yeah oh okay you know i'm talking mobsters and shit and i was bookmaking at 12 years old making yeah. 125 dollars a week yeah and this is a fucking kid you know 1972 73 i'm fucking 
fucking hustling tickets on the streets. Right. You know, football tickets and fucking making money. I mean, fucking think about that. Yeah. And then, so there's no excuse why, and you're right, 100%. Along the way, there were better people that you should have looked at or mm. whatever. And my parents weren't bad people. Right. My mom's a nurse, and my dad was a, well, he was in the union. He was a, a union delegate with the local 26, was a tin knock in New yeah. York, in New York, you know, fucking My unions. parents, the most straight laced, normal people you could have met. Really? Yeah, and I just fucking. You just wanted to be a fuck. You have any brothers and sisters? Out. Yeah, a sister, and she's super normal too. So that's how you know that it's just me. I got five. <laughs> I had five brothers and sisters. I guess I'm the fuck up too. Yeah, you know, right? I mean, two I'm, no, they haven't been to prison. No, two are dead from sicknesses, mm. and the other one is still around. She's sixty some. I'm sixty years old now. Yeah, how the fuck you still? You, you seem like you got a lot of energy. I, I always wonder what the fuck my older elder years are going to be like. And there's certain people I look at where they're in their 70s, their 80s, and they still seem like they're just out here bouncing around. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I still feel energetic. I mean, I always got Krills, and we were at a party with the, you know, the porn stars and old fucking shit. And right. Then, and we oh, were, you were with yeah. the fucking Assholes Live Forever guy, right? Yeah, yeah. We were all over the fucking place. What are you doing? You're just doing a photo shoot with all the porn stars and shit? Kind of like that. You're Something famous like, like that? No, now, huh? <laughs> for 420. Oh, yeah. You know, obviously 420 party. And then yesterday we were dope as yo. And the energy I love about it is because I look at you guys. Right. And I say, if I, if I slow down, I can't keep up. Mm. Even slow down. Because my fast pace, and I rejuvenate. Obviously, right. I get tired. But I like to party. I like to live life. And I like to uh, enjoy what we do. Whether it's programs, whether it's fucking YouTube, whether it's my podcast, whether, whatever it is, Adam, yeah. I love it because it keeps me energized. It keeps me to fucking, what am I going to do, sit down and fucking uh, watch fucking Barney Miller or some <sighs> shit all my life? Fuck, no, I still jack off. I like to <laughs> fuck. I take Trimix. I do all the fucking things that I like to have fun in life. What's Trimix? You Trimix, you know that's the shit in injection in the dick that makes you fucking you hard do as that. fuck. Wow. Oh. I know male porn star dudes, who, yeah. who I, but I've heard them talk about it, but I haven't really met anybody who's like, yeah, I do it. I, I knew a porn star, and he told me they, that's what they do. Yeah. And I go, what do you, you know, when you tell me something, like, you know, everybody tries everything. And not that I can't get it up. Right. I can get it up anytime Is I want. Supercharges like it? Holy fuck. <laughs> Four hour hard on. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Let's fucking break this desk. Wow. But it's but just. But you're in a crazy. relationship? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We have a, go, a good relationship. Yeah. We don't That's live good. together, been together, you know, stuff like that. So it's perfect. Uh, and four, 13 four years, hours? Water, 13 years, four hours, <laughs> four fucking hours. Listen to this. This is a true story. Okay, if that's getting drunk, what's the hangover? Is there anything that happens as a result no, after? No, no. One time I had to take the shot to, to fucking deflate it. They have that too. Yeah, they don't fuck around today. And the needle. Feel like I are are know you scared about of this. needles? Absolutely not. not. Really, but are we scared of no. needles? No, no, obviously. Shit, we had fucking needles. I did tattooed somebody. <laughs> well, I was banging down H bombs, but you know, <laughs> got some tattoos. Yeah. So you take the thing. The most I had one time was a seven hour. Hold on. And you know they tell you <laughs> after four hours go to the doctor. Yeah. I find out that's bullshit. And I find out that's bullshit because the urologist said, he didn't say, he said, listen, if it gets too long and you, it depends how you feel, all that, and you're hard, you can get the, the blood can get stuck in the, in the penis, and you can get uh, Peroni's disease or whatever, and they cut the dick and all that shit. Wow. And it could be bad. So, but he goes, Larry, that would take a long time, like 20 hours, 24 hours. He goes, Jesus. the reason they tell these people to go to the hospital after four hours because the doctor's not going to see him for 12 fucking more hours. <laughs> and it's probably going to be gone, but, you know, and you already signed in the hospital and they made your fucking money. Mm. You know, that's kind of what they say. So it's, but it's a fucking amazing. And I love the energy everything gives me. I don't take, like, drugs to do the HGH or any of that shit. Don't say wouldn't. I mean, I'm open to everything. You testosterone? I, I to keep it up my higher level. Uh -huh. I shoot a needle. You know, you how know, often? Like every Just two weeks. Consistently, you don't you don't get off it at any point. No, well, at my level, see, my levels were very low, uh -huh. and they don't know why they go low and high. Everybody's go as you Probably go. Pretty normal for it to dip down by your age, though, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. And you want to keep it high. Yours will start going down at forty. Right. That's usually the the, the time they'll start looking at your testosterone. And it doesn't have, like, you might have a testosterone right now of 700. 
Okay. Well, my testosterone was supposed to be about 300, and it was like 190. Mm. So they give it to me. And I still fucked. I still did all that shit. So it wasn't like I couldn't get it up, but it was, it, it was, it was fucking like energy zapping. Right. Now you, they get me up, and I go, I'm up at 600, where you are, 650, whatever it is. And I feel great. I get the energy. I can get up. I was up mm. this morning at 545 doing a podcast. I always think about the testosterone thing. But then I look at Joe Rogan and I'm like, you eh, look a little too swole for me. Yeah, well, yeah, I, no, that's steroid. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's, yeah. there's a difference. <laughs> Testosterone is steroid. I don't know what he does. That's He's the same a great thing, right? No. Hmm. No, there's an anabolic steroid, and then there's, there's a uh, testosterone is a level in your body. Your body produces right, but the steroid there's steroids is synthetic testosterone. So, yeah, and it does, your body doesn't produce it, and it's got an anabolic in it that, that does other things too. Hmm. And then and you go and there's even people who know, and I never did them. It's about cycles because when I was in the gym doing crazy shit. You, you new guys, so they have to cycle and they go on and off. Yeah, and that's where you get the rate. I don't know about all the rate. Listen, or your balls getting small. I don't even fucking know about any of that shit. Right. But I just never did it. I was always big and strong enough that I didn't have to do it. I can't imagine doing it because I'm too scared. Uh, I have a very good routine going with my girl and our porn podcast and everything, and I feel like I can go a bunch of times in a row, and I feel scared that if I did testosterone, then I would get more supercharged in that way for a while, and then I, I'm kind of scared of like the, the downward curve. I have to have her or you anytime on my podcast and all my videos that get real good. Because sure. especially what I, I interview, uh, I've interviewed, you know, strippers, this kind of stuff. So it's like, and my podcast is called The Real Deal. Mm. We don't cut. We don't do any. Just fucking do it and pop it and go. Right. I tell people, say it like it is. I don't give a fuck by saying it. Obviously, that's why I am. Mm. I tell people like that, too. Don't, don't be an asshole because you're going to be exposed for a fucking jerk off racist or whatever the fuck you are. Right. And I tell them, fuck it, that's it. That's my deal with them. Do you, you know? have the same uh, issue that uh, when I was speaking to uh, Big Herc, he told me? Oh, yeah. That a lot of people have been asking me to, to go, you know. Oh, yeah. Because we're both prison. We're both the same, kind of same system. They good say, guy. Yeah, yeah, I heard he's a good guy. Yeah, too. yeah. But he told me uh, that one of the weirdest facets of uh, his channel is that he most often goes viral when he's talking about butt rape. I noticed that you've also got some uh, couple million view videos about butt rape. Oh, absolutely. What, what's with the public fascination about that? Listen, I think the public has a fascination. We all do about sex and fucking in the ass or fucking upside down. Nobody has a fascination <laughs> of fucking missionary style in a fucking bed. Hmm. I, I, unless you're fucking been in 1920s and shit or whatever the fucking porn it is. Right. And I, so I think everything, even with prisoners... You know, you, you talk about masturbation in prison. You talk about, you know, in the shower, what really happens or whatever you're talking about. And you find that people get fascinated. And I really think it's because everybody has their inner inner secrets, inner things in life. And they want to fucking explain and they can get, get it out now. Oh, they're talking about something that's, oh, supposedly taboo. Right. You know, fucking anal sex and all the kind of shit like that. I love it. I mean, good for them. I think it's the fucking... <laughs> Listen, this is America. Right. Fucking free. I am the biggest libertarian in the fucking world. Right. Non-political. I hate them all. Libertarian. Leave me the fuck alone. Right. You know, I'll pay my tax and understand the little shit we got to do. Yeah. But leave me the fuck alone. I think there's something about the butt rape thing where, like, it's like the ultimate unknowable thing that people are fascinated by. Most people never even go to prison. And then the idea that there's people raping each other is just like this bizarre world that it's kind of like everybody's ultimate fear that something like that could happen to them you know but what people don't understand it's the rapes aren't it's more common just people having sex yeah it's and it's consensual it's or whatever or intimidating and implied yeah. i can go that way the woman the uh, cc that i just introduced you to told me she was fucking all kinds of chicks while she was locked up oh fucking hey i mean i was with them in the halfway house and they tell you how to make dildos and all that shit right. with the, the pads and they bend yeah. them over and tape them up and they get ace bandages for the straps i asked her how prison was she just goes oh man i was fucking i'm like you were fucking i'm like, I'm like holy shit <laughs> That's not something I hear dudes say when I ask them about oh, prison. Oh, wow. That is good. That is fucking funny. I, I fucking did a lie detector test, man, and that was fun. Mm. You ever do one? No. You can't fail them. I mean, you can't cheat them. You, you know? can't? No. It takes like a mega bullshit. expert to cheat it? I failed it every time I took it. 
Really? I mean, if if I didn't want to, or told the truth when I wanted to tell the truth, and, but it says it, and, and it's right. And would you say about yourself that you're an above-average liar? No. I feel like it's got kind of prerequisite of a lot of the stuff that you've done no, in your job. No, right? no, no. I'm I, like, I don't, now I'm so t sometimes too truthful. But back then, uh, would you nah, have said I mean, that you were good at lying? Because I, I don't feel well, like Well, you I'm had good... to be a good guy to get in in the, in the jewelry store and tell them your story. Right. And fuck, you know, I used to tell them a story of, hey, I, I'm a contractor in the area and I'm looking to buy a ring for my wife about one and a half, two carats. I got money now. I bought her a half a carat ring back when I was married 10 years ago. What do you got? Uh -huh. And then they're showing me the real shit. They're not showing me the bullshit. They're bringing out the fucking box with the loose stones in it. And now they're showing you that. Whole, and, and, you know, I, yes, you have to be a liar or a con, whatever yeah. you fucking call it. You had to be. Right. But it, when it came to certain things, I see, I have that kind of, I, I don't give a fuck attitude in life. Right. And I, I, I've had it more and more and more. But I got two grandkids. I love them. You know, my son and my daughter. And we're very close, even though I miss them. My daughter was 15 months old when I went to prison. My son was seven. My son works with me now. Right. And uh, he was seven years old when I went to prison. He, I got out and he was 18. Wow. And my daughter was 13. Is that what the hard, was that the hardest part about oh, being locked up? Fucking though? way harder than anything else. I mean, mm. the survival is, is an instinct and, and you get to it. When I was tortured, I was in the hole for 11 straight months. And that, you know, that was the toughest because I, I really never thought I'd live. I never thought I'd get out of their life. Uh, yeah. And they fucking don't give a fuck. They broke my ribs, fucking dragged me out, pissed on my face, fucking, uh, you know, telling me, stop, yeah, keep writing law, uh, uh, senators, law, see what happens, keep doing your shit, <laughs> you spit. And you're that, you're strapped naked on a fucking gurney, fucking you, that's it, man. Fuck, mm. You ain't moving, you ain't getting it. And you, you start, you know, then they throw you literally back in there. Fucking they'll start throwing the f clothes through the chute, you know, the shit, you know, the food chute that they open on you. And, you know, then the cycle biz, because I was crazy too. I was going nuts. I thought about suicide. Anybody tells you they wouldn't. That's not true when you think about it. And uh, when I was going crazy, I used to fight them. They'd say, cuff up. If they tell you to cuff up and you don't cuff up or you cover that window in the hole, they get fucking pissed as fuck. Right. So I got to the point where one, fuck you, fuck you. They opened the shoot door. They sprayed mace in my face. If you ever had mace in your face, you're down, snot's coming out of your fucking, you can barely think you're breathing. And they, you think they just take you to the shower to take her? No. Put you in a fucking, the, the, the four points. Then I get better. I said, okay, fuck these. This is how crazy I was getting. I said, fuck these motherfuckers. I took my mattress now, I'm covering the window. There's a, in the door, you know, it's got the window. You cover that, that pisses them the fuck off. Right. Because they don't know what's going on in there. I put my mattress, you know, a little fucking bullshit blue shit up against the fucking thing so they can't spray me. And they're cursing me. I'm, fuck you, motherfuckers. Suck my dick. I'm fucking screaming all crazy. Knowing I'm going to get a beaten. I'm crazy, of course. Right. They pushed a fucking broomstick to push the thing out and drop the fucking concussion grenade. Boom, you fucking go down, and, man. Yeah, like, how does that work? It does something with your equilibrium. Right. And it fucking, you... And you it just, just makes you collapse? Like, you just... You see stars. You fucking... You don't fuck where you are. It fucks your equilibrium. Then, of course, they rushed in. Boom, boom. They and do you just... In. Do they call it that because you fucking collapse and give yourself a concussion off the ground? Uh, you know, that, that I never thought about why they call it a concussion grenade, but I could see that exactly. And what's the best strategy? You curl up in a ball on the ground? Yeah, I mean, I guess. I mean, never tried it because I never knew it was coming. You don't you know, know it's coming, right? Yeah, yeah you don't know fuck. that's coming. Then I got shocked. But then I started learning, Adam, that the pen was mightier than the sword. Mm. I started writing and said, fighting lawsuits. I got, learned the law. I got a paralegal degree in prison. Help people all over the place. I got enough credits for being a lawyer, but I can't take one. I'm a felon. Mm. But I fucking, you know, love the law. Ten years. Fuck with them. You're going to love this one. I love the porn stuff, too. Because, man, we wish... We, you know, you remember pirate books and private books? No, they used to have so. magazines back then. Like, little pirate or private. You got to look them up. Fucking hardcore. Which would... What do you want? I don't, I don't want fucking Mary Jane fucking sex. It was a porno magazine? Porno magazine. Pirate or private? Pirate 
or private. You can look that's they 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 they're the little one like the pet tops forum size, you know, uh-huh. little shit. And it they were and we used to rent them. You'd get one in smuggled in or you had it from another prison because they stopped that. You'd rent it for a dollar a night. Jesus. You'd rent the fucking porno for a dollar a night. Hard times. Yeah, well you got I go to prison, you want the best? I'm in my cell at one o'clock at night. Mm. No, Normal yeah, guy. You got in trouble for masturbating. Jerking off. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? When I went down to the hole and the fucking lieutenant's shaking his head because they know you, they know you're crazy. I go, what am I here for? He goes, yeah, you were jerking off at one in the morning yourself. I said, so? Gives a fuck what I'm doing in my bed. I'm yeah. in the bed with a fucking porno When magazine. I imagine prison, I imagine that's one of the only things I'm going to be allowed to do. <laughs> Listen, uh, you did it every day. I'm young at that time. I'm in my 30s. Yeah. You know what I mean? The fuck, I'm doing it every fucking day, switching hands and gaining a stroke. Right. You know, and fucking, <laughs> that's what the fuck. Gaining I mean, a stroke? You know, you say, but I do it so good, I can switch hands and gain a stroke. <laughs> wow, yeah. No, there's been a few times in my life where I, like, broke my hand or some shit in a fight, and then you got to switch over to left hand in it. Oh, it's a fucking weird period in your life, dude. That's the fucking truth. It is. <laughs> you fucking, ever been there? Oh, are you kidding me, man? <laughs> fucking, you know, I've tried it all. That listen, any kid. When we were kids, you know, you did it five times a day. Five, Jesus. I, I did. Maybe That's I'm epic. a little fucking. That's prolific, fuck, right there. Maybe yeah. I am a little fucking. What do no, you call I it? Uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, high energy. Right. Maybe. Maybe I was high energy back then. No, yeah. Have you ever tried Trimix? What was it again? Trimix, the, the uh, stuff, the injection. Oh, hell no, no. Have you tried Viagra? No. Never did Viagra? No. Come on, I'm calling bullshit on I that. I never have, no. You never did Viagra? Mm-hmm. Wow. Is there a reason why? I mean, I know a lot of young people who do it just because it's that extra, extra, extra. I can go a lot of times in a row without having to do anything, so I just never tried it. Wow. I'm curious you. about it. But also, a little nervous. so I do this porn podcast with my girl where we sometimes we have male porn stars come in and fuck the girls instead of us oh, yeah. or whatever. It kind of depends on the scenario where we, we interview the girls and then we have sex with them. And sometimes we interview Jeez. them. And then you they, need an actor? Sh- no, <laughs> sure. Yeah, <laughs> I got you. Yeah. <laughs> but as a result, I see dudes popping Viagra and how fucking weird and tweaked out they act when they're on the shit. Like, I don't know. They just. I, I see dudes just acting like really antsy and weird and like they're just so nervous and popping fucking dick pills and I'm just like I don't want to fucking have to rely on that. Wow, that, no, I, I never. This is the truth. These, uh, right now, there's never. I can get an erection with my girl. We fuck a lot and all uh, that. You know, can I go like when I was younger? I did. You know, did a lot. But now, can I? Now, a couple times. You know, I'm good for. Right. And uh, but when you do, you want a little extra or whatever. <laughs> Funny story. Uh, we I do the shot. I don't tell her or whatever. And this is gonna break. She's gonna hear Surprise. this one. Surprise! So we go, and she goes, "Wow, holy shit! What happened tonight?" Kind of deal, you know? Yeah. And I said, "Well, I got to tell you what I did." And then, you know, she goes, oh, "Okay." She you know knows me. She knows I'm crazy. Where do you get the shot? You buy it on. You can get it oh, right okay. online, but okay. to a doctor, bullshit, whatever it is. Right. I end up going to a real urologist then. So anyway, I did that. Funny, I was leaving her house that night. She goes, hey, when are you going to do that shot again? <laughs> <laughs> Legendary. That fucking shot. I mean, you think about that in prison. And, you know, I just think about how there's no conjugal visits. You know, yeah. why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you try to keep a family together? Mm. Guy, you can use it for good behavior. Right? You can use it for controlling a person you know you're getting laid twice a year i don't give a shit once a year you know whatever the fuck the number you're in there and you know you're not getting laid right you know i mean but i do know guys who got you know with the librarian got guys in the visiting room used to cover <laughs> for each other right you know to get pussy and stuff like the librarian that. in the prison is fucking the prisoners oh yeah that's oh, grimy that is fucking grimy these you know, bitches must be stopped oh fuck <laughs> Let these people fuck. <laughs> right? sure, yeah. Let these people fuck in prison. Let my you know, people go. Uh, yeah, I, 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 but I always do really tell young people, man, I fucking go crazy. I tell you crazy stories. On my t- Don't make bad choices to go in prison, man. I'm telling you, yeah. the best day out here is better than... The worst day out here is better than your best day in there. Right. When you got grown men telling you, hey, you know, go over there, get yourself lights out. 
and, and I can't go, go fuck yourself. Or I can, and then I'm back in the hole for another 30 days. Right. So what's worse than that? I, I can't pick it. I know bad families. I, you know, I've been around. I tell, deal with a lot of families. Is anything worse? Yes, maybe being abused, and we can go on and on about a lot of shit. And, uh, and I, but I, I want to know that how bad can it be, or really is it, hmm. if these guys are fucking going to prison the way they are? But so, okay, this is my question. Is you hear a lot of conversation in L.A. right now about how the progressive prosecutors are too lenient and how there's this crime wave and a lot of the crime wave is because of the fact that it's kind of easy to get out of prison that everybody's getting released etc cetera, etc cetera. and i hear that and you know i hear about these crime statistics and i'm like wow okay so that's compelling and i also think about the fact that you know prison just seems unbelievably cruel and unfair in america and it's like in my head, I'm always kind of trying to balance these two. It's like, what what is the the right solution? Because I so rarely end up thinking that prison actually does anything good for the people that I know end up spending time there. But then at the same time, it feels like right now, California specifically is just kind of dealing with the ramifications of letting people out too leniently. It feels like every week you're reading about some murder that happens by a guy who was out on bail at the time or whatever. How do you think about that? Oh, I, you know, I've been following the situation here, and obviously I was on a couple of TV shows uh, about this incident, you know, especially when they were they were rioting and they, they were just like mobs were going into stores, taking shit out right. and not getting arrested or whatever and, and stuff. They have to have the balance of rehabilitation because no matter what these kids are doing, they're either be led by poor parenting, poor whatever, you can go deeper or whatever the whole fucking issue is. Mm. I think they got to get tough again. I think they got to take crime. I, I think that now bail is a money issue that is it right that one guy doesn't get bail and one the other because he just had a, had a better lot in life. You know, his dad's, you know, whoever mm. he is. You know, you got to look at that, that weighing of that. But you shouldn't just be giving people bail just because you don't have room or you want to be lenient. The, and I blame the, the, the PSI people, the pre-sentencing investigation people who go. Okay. Because you got to know, if I'm a pro PSI person, which is the person that does the investigation, let's say you're going to go for bail, you're out, and I do your research on your whole fucking body, and I look at your case, and I look at your mom, and I look at violence as a youth where you're there, you can almost see the fucking handwriting on the wall what's going to happen. Uh -huh. He has no one to go back to. He's going to be drugged. He was doing drugs on the streets and everything. That person's got to come forward and not just put everybody in a lump sum and say, ah, they're all good people, because they're not. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you have to protect the society first. I believe in that. Right. And, but I also believe you need to rehabilitate these kids. Nobody's trying. They're throwing them into a fucking system that is broke. We have, you know, the best ways to prove a system is we're the most incarcerated country in the free world mm. by actual numbers and, of course, by percentage. Think of that. We got more people in prison than China don't tell me that China cuts their head off. China has a, a higher suicide rate because they have more disrespect. It disrespects their family and their, their way of life. Hmm. And all the other countries that we are higher, we have states that would be the highest in the world in incarceration. By, by, it's crazy our numbers. Numbers don't lie. I've learned that. You've learned that. I think everybody has learned that. Hmm. And I think what happens is uh, we are just taken in one side and we go, this country is so bad at going one extreme to the other. Whether it's fucking COVID, with, get the fuck out of here with these fucking masks. And, oh, well, everybody lock me the fucking down. Get the fuck out of here. Let me make my choice. Yeah. I mean, you know, telling me what I got to do, uh, the fucking crazy shit that's going on. Or take Oxycontin pills. I used to take 180 milligrams a day. Wow. I have a back surgery, 11 vertebrae, 15 in the neck. Whole fuck. So this is after prison or this before? is after prison. Oh, yeah. Nobody ever seen me high because it affected my body differently. Obviously, I had pain. I had inflammation. What happens is an athlete might take get a broken arm, take an oxy, keep taking it after he has no more inflammation, and the drug is searching for inflammation goes to the endorphin in the brain. That's how that oxys work. Mm. So if you have a lot of pain and you have inflammation, the drug goes in your system and finds it and dulls it, doesn't cure it if we know that, but that's how the opioid works. Now, if you have no pain, no inflammation, that's gonna go through your body into your endorphins. Right. Hence addiction. Now you can get physically addicted. I was te technically physically addicted, right. but I weaned myself off. Boom, 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 boom. 
six months or what is it, five months, off 180 a day. Right. Now, what does the, the, the medical industry do? They go from giving Oxycontins out like candy to not letting a dude who really needs them fucking get them because he's fucking, uh, you know, the law, this, the, you know, it's addiction. How do they know what that poor dude's going through? Mm. It works. It saved my life for a lot of years. Really? And so I'm not a proponent of people taking drugs. I'm not a proponent of it. But don't come off and tell me everything is bad. It was invented for the right reason. Did they overprescribe it? Sure, but get to the doctors who did that. Don't fucking blame the patients. Right. You come out with all these laws, a patient can't get X amount of Oxycontin. Of course, that's his. Well, the fucking guy is fucked up. Kidney kidney stones, kidney disease, a back that can't quit. Let him the fucking get high. Right. Or not high. You get the pain as much as you can. Right. You know? And I think they're coming to the hoppy medium, but it, this country does that on extremes on both sides. That was the uh, the only drug you've been really addicted to, or I know? was never addicted to any drug. Even that fit the the, the psychological addiction I never was. Nobody oh, okay. ever even seen me high on the drug. Right. Uh, I never. I had that. I have that. I have a a great saying with all this: you control it, don't let it control you. Right. I don't give a fuck what you place the it with. You could place the it with weed, coke, heroin. You control it, heroin. Don't let heroin control you. Not to say to do heroin. Please don't go out there and anybody think I'm saying any proponent of any drug. I'm a believer in choice making. Mm. You make your own fucking choice. You're old enough. You're 38 years old. What should I give a fuck what you do at your home in your house? Right. I don't give a fuck what it is. As long as you're not hurting a kid or something doing something like that. Other than that, I don't give a fuck what you, you want to hang upside down on the fucking thing by your balls upside. <laughs> Who gives a fuck? Definitely. <laughs> this, this is a question I want to ask you. When you were in prison, uh, were you uh, recruited by like white supremacists, or, or did they leave you alone? Is no, it, is it like I was that? already hooked with the mob. Oh, so that's so, like a different category of yeah, white guys. Oh in yeah, there? oh yeah, oh yeah. When I went to prison, I first suitcased the note. You know, you're the suitcase and hiding something in your rectum. Oh. You know, you take a. I've hid I've hit a knife in my ass, you know, because you had to protect yourself. What do you do? You put it in a thing. sheath of some sort. Yeah, or? you put it in like the toothbrush holder. Okay. You know, a toothbrush holder, yeah. then you masking tape it and you insert it. God damn. And then you get to the yard and you have a wooden handle along the yard. And the reason you didn't leave the knife there and only the wooden handle, because the guards were smart. Right. And they would run metal detectors around the yard. And if you had a shank out there, they'd find it along the walkway. But if it's a piece of wood, it doesn't go off and they're just walking down the, down the uh, path. Right. So you get out there, you squat, you take it out, you put it in yourself, save my life. I mean, I, I stabbed two people, been stabbed twice, and I've been shot. But stabbings were in prison, both doing them and getting them. And if I did not have a shank one time, done just like I said, I'd have been dead. Because by the time uh, the fight broke out and knives and foot going, the guards are down in the towers with the you know guns shooting down. And they shoot, and they are trying well, they, 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 to... Is the first, it non-lethal bullets? Or no, they, no, no, no. They shoot to fucking kill. Fuck you. you just know. for fighting? Well, they can. It How depends. does that even make sense? They though? get people. Once there's knives involved oh, yeah. it, it, or any kind of weapon involved is when the guards it's, come out the tower. It's weird because... Uh, can you expect them to have a good enough shot to kill the person? They're all the sharpshooters. Who knows? Oh, okay. I mean, who gives a fuck? It just what? feels too dangerous. Oh, I mean, think about it. I mean, but they're there to protect guards. Like overreaction. You know, you have a guard on a yard. Yeah. And he's, you know, he's walking around with two, three, four guards. You think they can control that yard? Fuck no. Right. Not even close. There's more shit going on that yard at that moment than that guard can fucking... You know, we did acid in prison. We did all these drugs, and there's so much shit going on in there that, right. that, that you can't burn. But the but the guard, if a guard is attacked or started surrounded, mm. let's say even people surrounded a guard, the towers opening up, the announcement comes down, get on your stomach, you know, and you fucking you better be flat on your fucking stomach. That's wild. How about this question? If you were able to institute a reasonable amount of changes in the prison system, you know, like a small platform of different ideas that actually seem plausible that might be able to be introduced. Where does your brain go in terms of like the best changes the, that you would want to make? The first thing we should do in prisons is stop private prisons. Mm. Private prisons are the biggest fucking scam in this country. They fucking making hundreds of millions on a person's back. Do you think they want to rehabilitate that person do you think they want even the guards in those places don't have enough guards per per inmate you know balances because of 
of uh, uh, they want to cut budgets and they want to make profits. It's a company. It's a profit company. How do you put a profit company on people's heads? Hmm. And that, and what does that do? They're not regulated by the government. They can be regulated. It's all such bullshit. They have what they call the ACA accreditation committees. They don't even fucking give a fuck or go. Again, it's a big money maker thing. Do you know what most wardens in a prison system do? The guy who abused me is a scumbag named Lamana. Hmm. That fucker then went to the private prison industry after he retired. Right. Now he's fucking running some district or whatever the fuck a big wiggy is in this system because he's got the connections, you know, how to do things and all to make it all bullshit. And and it's when when anybody to me tries to defend private prisons. Right. I just go to the one thing, humanity. You know, if, if we're locking you up, we should be responsible for for the buns locking you up. Not locking you up and say, hey, now this company, you're making money over here, you're giving us a better deal, mm. fucking go to that guy. But couldn't pr couldn't privately owned prisons make sense in theory if they were regulated properly? Because you would think, like, you know, the government has private companies do a lot of things for them because they're able to essentially do it more effectively and the government realistically probably shouldn't be taking on all these responsibilities. Like, private prisons, if they were run correctly, could be fine. Right? How do you run a correct prison when there's a profit on your head? Mm. What happens if they start doing such a good job, the fucking money comes out? Do you think the CEOs yeah. or, the, or the board of directors is going to want you to keep doing it? Yeah, I mean, They have so many things I found out since I've been out. Really? Like they, they give bonuses to wardens who save money. What the fuck is that? So what is the board? Even the guards. On my channel, I, had a, I have a guard that used to fucking... Guard me. Like how do how do you ask a, a private corporation to go against their own interests? Because anything that's good for the prisoner is bad for them. Everything that costs money, you a know? program, a fucking pre-release, uh, meta better medical health, anything in that prison mm. is saying more money, more money. Fuck you! I got this at this. It's like I, asking McDonald's or the factory farm to care about how the chickens feel. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You know? It's directly <laughs> against their interests. Come on, don't bullshit. Yeah. And don't come off like that. Oh, yeah, don't donate money to this shit. That's for sure. Right. But it's just a smart percentage of what they're going to make. Private prisons is the number one thing. The next best thing they can do in the whole prison system is get a team like a me. You have other guys who know been in prison on your show. I see some shows. You get these guys that really, truly care. A guard a retired guard, maybe a retired administrator, a retired nurse, or we're not retired, a couple of guards, and we have authority to go into that prison every, anytime we want and inspect it. Because if I told Adam to go into prison and inspect him, you wouldn't know where to go, what to look for. Uh -uh. You wouldn't know in the hole at the back corner cell they go after and they put under construction or under paint during inspections. They got a psychopath inmate that's taking feces out of his ass and fucking writing demonic shit on the wall and he doesn't belong there. Jeez. And there's an inspection. So now if I do the inspection on whatever time and I can protect, I really thought this out, you could then fix the problems I find, whatever they are, the true problems, and they have them, and the guards being an asshole, this guy, this guy, all oh, this guy. Listen, there's so many ways to fix how to rehabilitate and do better better for, for pre-release. Mm. People should come to prison, and if they have a date, let's say you got five years, right. you should start your pre-release the minute you walk in the fucking door. Mm. Not wait till four and a half years and say, oh, sign this, you just went to pre-release. Mm. Well, they, a lot of people just don't even know about that. They don't even give a fuck. No, the prison don't care. They just want numbers. Mm. Just like GEDs. Prison, you know, prison says, oh, we, we'd like everybody to get a DGD. They know people can't. So if you got a guy who's slow and he's taking all the time to try it again, he's real slow, you think they're going to keep helping that fucker? Mm. They don't give a fuck. Get the guy who's smart and can pass the test so we can show the, the politicians, look, we, we got GEDs. We had 55 guys at this prison graduate GED. Yeah when they're leaving the people who really need it behind because mm. they don't give a fuck. And it's just about, and until we get the system where it's not based on bonuses for wardens. Mm. When I found this, I found this out from the union president of the Federal Bureau of Prisons, of the prison I was in. This guy calls me up, right? I get a fucking email there, my Instagram, my son does. He says, hey, Pop, he goes, some fucking guy, girl says her dad was your guard, but made your prison pasta. Oh, what the fuck? His name's Gary Massey. 
I know Gary. Uh -huh. Good guard. It was in Jessup. Straight up motherfucker. He would tell you the right thing. He ends up going to prison himself, but he's the union head of the prison. What they Jessup. get him for? Smuggling in uh, cigarettes and creatine. Oh, Lord. And he did it because his creatine. mom was sick and he had no money. Why creatine? Well, because that's the inmate, what the inmates wanted. There were guys that wanted steroids or I'm on the outside, I don't even take creatine. No shit. I mean, Is are you that kidding good? me? I didn't even think it was that big a deal. Nah, well, in prison back in those days, it was. Steroids, sure. I mean, oh, of yeah. course, but those, you know, money. But, he, I mean, even protein powder is big in there to try to get. Really? Because nobody, you know, they don't give it to you. Creatine's that extra. That's. I mean, we yeah. got so much if we wanted. Yeah. It's a whole different animal. As far as the creatine with fucking uh, him getting in, but he was the head of the union, and I met him and interviewed him multiple times for this channel, my channel. Great fucking guy. We talked about how we, we both believe fucking Epstein was murdered, and he's a BOP guard. Really? He was there. We talk about that. But he fucking comes on. He goes, he told his daughter, he goes, that's Larry Lord. That's the guy who showed me how to make prison pasta. What is prison pasta? Prison pasta is the way we make prison in, uh, pasta in prison. You take two drain covers. You you know what you know what a stinger is. Yeah. So you get the strain covers. You make the stinger. You know stinger. You drop the stinger in the water, and I can boil the water quicker than you can boil it on a stove. And then we make what we do. We steal pasta we have from the thing. I used to cook for sometimes ten to twelve guys on a Friday. Wow. And we'd make pasta and we'd have fucking, you take pepperoni in packages, you lay them out on the fucking, you know, uh, paper towels that you get, like, you know, the industrial shit they give you. We'd lay them out, lay them out, another layup. We'd cook pepperoni till it was like fucking bacon. Mm. Shit, I'm getting hungry. We just fucking ate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And then we fucking did that in the pot and we steal it all. Steal gar gar, cut the garlic up kinda like a movie style. And I used to cook it. I used to give a bowl to that guard, Gary Massey, because hmm. he would check people out for us. Hey Lawton, he's no good. You know, meaning he's either snitch, he's a fucking chomo, get away from him, do something, you know, cause right. we, you know. He was that kind of guard. And there was that's why people have often ask me, I don't hate cops, I don't hate guards. I don't do that because People are people, mm. and we need good cops. You know that. No. You can't defund the fucking cops. Right. How the fuck are we going to defund the cops? Yeah. But, I mean, just throwing money at them doesn't seem like the best I, idea. I, I, matter of fact, you know, I think I was just talking about this to my guys in the, in the car. We just coming back from uh, an NBC shoot this morning. And we, we on the way we said this. We said, listen, what you just said, I think that was mischaracterized. It should be reallocate the funds the right way. Yeah. You know, more community policing, less fucking jump on your throat and, you know, more more tanks and more shit. Politically, I always thought that was a doomed slogan. Like that that's oh. like, that's a slogan that I would feel like the right would have cooked up f to like try to smear the left. A hundred percent. Because it's such a it's just and especially with California experiencing this like uptick in crime, it's like and not just California, but all over the country, it's like what do you say in the face of that? You know, you, there's nothing. I mean, there's no winning slow. Whoever came up with that marketing campaign yeah. was great. Defund the police really seems like a losing proposition uh, when crime is bad because people are scared. And I always said I thought defunded should have been reallocating. And right. I think they would have been done. They had some cities try to fucking take it all away and that fucking crazy shit in Minnesota. Right. But, you know, I, I think crime mm. also is ending up taking it because of a pandemic. Mm. I think people are out. People not giving a fuck. They see how this this crazy world is going a little bit. Right. And I do think young people didn't have hope. They weren't in school for so long. Mm. I don't know how, Cal I think California was real bad, right? Uh, I lived in Florida. They didn't give a fuck <laughs> about the fucker. I don't think we missed a week, Yeah, you know, except for like traveling. And I travel a lot. I hate it. Coming here on this trip was the 19th. And they lifted it the fucking that night, the 18th. Like it or not, DeSantis looks pretty good, uh, given the COVID thing, just given the results of how it panned out, you know? Uh, He's he looking great. He actually did a great job. Yeah. I mean, you like him. There's a, I don't get into that part of it. He did a great job. Yeah. He fucking, he kept businesses open as much as he can. He, he did the, he, you know, listen, you think Florida had more deaths with all the old fuckers there. Mm. You know, we are an old, old base state. You know, a lot of retirees, a lot of this shit, but he got them all fucking vaccinated immediately right so he wasn't anti-vaccination or anything that he's he's a choice guy right i got mad at him when he wanted the cruise lines to fucking 
not require passing or whatever, mm. not, or, or whatever, you know, a pass test. That's a private business, man, DeSantis. Right. If the cruise line wants to do that so they can get people back on their ship, what the fuck can you step in? So this is something I want to get to uh, in this interview. Is So what what year did you get out? 2007, August 24th. And so then what is the journey from there to you starting a YouTube channel, and how do you realize that that's the future for you? You know, well, when I first got out, I started the reality check program. So it's, right. my company's been around for a while, and I developed that program, and now it's used everywhere and stuff of that nature. So that wasn't my first delve into And then I was a TV analyst for most networks, mm. uh, CBS, NBC, whenever, I, Casey Anthony. About prison stuff? About anything related to prison, I'm called. I'm still called and used a lot about that stuff. Right. And then... What happened, I'm doing work in my program with police agencies, with you know schools or whatever, speaking. And the, the incident happened with Vanity Fair. Right. Fucking me. And boy, did they fuck up. I mean, they actually, I, I got the head of Con Nest Travel's email. I'm talking the head of fucking CEO of Con Nest Travel. It's a parent company of Vanity Fair. And they wrote me back so quick and I got a check in three days. For the four hundred ninety one dollar liquor bill, I remember the number, <laughs> and but they get and they apologized and said heads rolled. He goes, well, we hope we can do business here in the future because they're watching me go crazy. The video I I did for them, eleven million. I did, I, I haven't looked in a while, but it was that eleven million or something like but that. You, you started doing like your style of those videos, right? Kind you, of my style with, with a bit different take. My take was I took this book, mm. and I'm the only one who did it. So, Great book. I was with Peter Golenbach, eight-time New York Times bestselling author. The book is crazy. And I took the book, Adam, and I totally narrated the whole book online. And it blew up. To this day, it's one of the most played playlists on YouTube. Wow. And it, it, the numbers just keep going. I mean, because the, the people want the book. They want to hear it. You know what I mean? And in my way. And I and it's only a very – it's it's a 20-minute ones of that chapter, whether it was I robbed the 800,000. I fucking – you fuck Mrs. Armolino, the opening chapter, right. or whatever. You know, when I first started, though, Adam, it was funny because I started, I said, I'm going to read this game, and I read it. What a fucking boring show. My son tells me, this fucking sucks, and you're boring. Just reading? You got to know what you're doing with that mm. shit, dude, like to make an audible book and all that. So I said, no. They, I narrated every chapter, and from there... It just fucking rocket and rocket and rocket and stuff. And then now we, of course, we're smarter. We took other things. We went off onto. We went to uh, a podcast that's doing great. We just started that, and it's doing fucking great. It's called The Real Deal with Larry Lawton. Right. Like I said, we would give a fuck if that camera fell down. You know, it's, it is what it is. You know, and people like that part of it. Right. You know, and then so we the YouTube itself. We're actually having a, a YouTube clip channel coming. Oh. We'll open one of them. Our merch is going great, and you know, we're growing that every day. And I just did this cigar deal that was, I mean, mega. I own it. You don't see many people even get this kind of a deal. I mean, I got, I'm got i with the third largest cigar company in the world, right. and we're going to be all over the world. I, I, I have some great artwork I'll send you that's just fucking... The box is a crooked diamond, and you know, it gets your story in there. Like these kind of boxes, these good cigars, right? They come with this packet in here. Mm. Ours will have a packet with this, my story on it. Yeah. So, how many people do that? That's you know an what idea I mean? right there. And, and when you think these are good, you'll love these, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, your guests will. No, you no. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna chief. <laughs> yeah, I'm going I, for it. Yeah, but that's where we're going now. And you know, the best part of this whole job, uh, Adam. And you know, because I know how hard people don't understand I do, hmm. is I get to work with my son. I get to work with friends who've taught me the industry and people in the industry. And that's what makes, that's even more of a motivation to come. And I, and I can't sit still. I mean, it's not our nature, you know, whether it's what fucking everything from sex to drugs to rock and roll. Right. So. 100%. Um, what are the things that you've learned about content? Like, what, what have you learned in terms of what works, what your audience wants to see, what kind of titles and thumbnails allow you to get people to actually fucking click? What, what have yeah, you learned? You know, that's a great question. You know, the, you know, what I found with my audience is uh, I, I branched off and tried everything. You know, we, I do now reviews, TV show room, movie rooms, ask me anything, different kind of variations of videos. Uh, and, and every one of them, it, it depends on. But what I always notice is when it's a... Prison, usually some story of mine in prison or one of my robberies. Mm. 
they go good. What I've also found out is obviously in YouTube and their algorithms and what they like, and you know how that bullshit works, and we can get into that, is that uh, the more people that do it and the more conversation you have with them, interaction, mm. YouTube puts you higher on their algorithms, and then they push you more and more. So, I mean, I always actually answer comments for almost every video I do. Nice. And I, and I like it. It keeps me engaged. keeps me feeling what people want. And, you know, I still get so many emails saying, Larry, how you helped me. I was a drug addict. And now, man, I what, listen to you. I got off. Even though I talk about it. I'm having fun about it. I'm legal. Because I'm not bullshitting. I tell it like it is. I don't want a guy to be addicted at home. Right. I don't. I want a guy. And those emails are fucking powerful. Or they, you know, you really realize you're doing something good. Right. Instead of just, ah, uh, you know, fucking... Uh, I uh, making money, okay, yeah, and I love it. I love making money. Come on, we all gotta like make money. I want to help people. I want to grow, get a better message out there. And and at the end of the day, at my age, at sixty, you're thirty eight. You're a whole different animal. And boy, I'm loving what you're doing. And I love where all you're sure. over the place. And I think I'm so impressed with that as a businessman, as an older guy, and knowing how much work. And now you got you know sites with the girls. And this fucking a, keep knocking that. But I've learned that this is a legacy now. Like, when this cigar is done, and it's about the, a brand, it's about a lifestyle. You know, you're hecked back, you can sit back, a bunch of guys having a scotch and a cigar around the day. It's going to outlive me. Mm. You know, I'm dead. Our content's going to always be here, but we can't keep making new content. Right. But the cigar keeps selling and selling for 50 years all over the world. Mm. That's blowing me away. And I'm a cigar smoker, Adam. Yeah. I might be smoking cigars for 40 years. <laughs> right. You know, since I was 20 years old. Right. So now I'm like, fuck. I mean, the biggest thing is, is there, and they're great guys I'm with. Because I ain't working with anybody I don't want to work with. I tell people, fuck it. If he's an I don't give a shit. Like you, I guarantee you don't want to work with anybody who's an asshole. No, I can't. It's do not it. waste your time. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> like, when, I almost said this before when we were talking about the liar part, but it's like, I feel like I've become a bad liar because I so infrequently have to bullshit anyone at this point in my life. Like, I just don't really like everybody works for me. I kind of can just be straight up with them <laughs> about nearly everything. You know, people come up to people send me an email with a business proposition. I want nothing to do with. I tell them to fuck off. You know, it's just hundred percent. I don't really got to like bullshit too much. Whereas when I think about like when you're young, when you got a job, I mean, you're just bullshit nonstop. It's you know, part of the part of the gig. It's a funny story you say that because you, you man, you are so right. I like the feeling I can do the same thing, right. especially at this stage and everything. Else. All right, fuck no, you know, uh, no. And if they're nice, I'm never an asshole to people. That's just not my style. I mean, right. I got to that too. But you know, what you talk about lying. A friend of mine who works for, let's just put it, the Alphabet Organization, uh, and he told me about lie detectors when they do it for the uh, uh, their agents and people. Mm. They ask him a question. You know what the answer is? Do you have a lie? And if they say no, then they're... You say no. You, I'm going to ask you. Did you ever tell your kids that you, uh, you know, there was a Santa Claus? <laughs> yeah, right. You're lying to them, aren't you? Yeah. So that the best way he told me is you answer it with that, so they can't do it. Right. This is the guy who told me how to beat, not beat them, but he's in in the business of what they want to really know. Right. They know the important stuff. They're deep enough. They're just verifying something. Uh, that they had that's what they do that's just as simple as what they do right so i mean i i think now not having to lie having the cigar brand having my son run the and growing we're mm. growing like in fucking weeds and it's it's fun the minute it's not fun you know fuck it 100 percent. and you you got 38 55, I don't know how many years. You you started young in the thing. I did look, you were like early, but you really changed and you knew how to change directions, which was amazing. It has been a journey. And, it's fun, and, and you learn every day. I just looked at my notes for you and I just realized I have two questions that I'm, I'm going to really regret if I don't ask these two <laughs> questions. So no, number one, does the criminal in you respect these sort of like new well i don't know if they're new school but these sort of smash and grab robberies that you see people doing at jewelry stores and shit like that where it's very coordinated 
They'll just run up, boom, smash the glass, grab a fuckload of shit, jump in the car, and they're out. It's not it's not sleek or well planned out like the stuff that you were doing. But does part of you respect that? The the, the ones I respect is the Pink Panther gang. That's out of uh, England that do those coordinated with cars through a mall, fucking shit. They're all over the TV out there. They're really an organized gang with, with jewel robberies. The, one of the best in the world. I gotta look that up. Yeah, look that up. It's called uh, uh, the Pink Panther Gang. And But now the guys who do smashing grabs know because they're missing out on so much. Now, it's not, does it take, again, it, I, I think maybe I appreciated the criminal planning and the, the, the setup and the fucking you know, case of the whole place. And, you know, you were a bit got, of an artist. Yeah, you know, it got me excited in <laughs> yeah. its own crazy fucking way. Right. How do you say that's fucking, you know, that makes you excited? Uh. But when I see a smash and grab, I go, you could stop those. Mm. They're making better and better fucking smash proof glass. Right. Now there's smash and grab, meaning grab and grab. They, you know, the guy shows you a wall wax, he grabs the rocks and runs. Right. They now have doors that can lock automatically. They have a lot of different things. To protect that. It was so much harder to protect against somebody like me. But do you really want to be locked in the jewelry store with a guy I with a gun? I loved it. No, but I mean, oh, you, if <laughs> they hit the button and then all of a sudden the guy who just pulled a gun out on you is locked in here with you. The smashing grabs don't pull guns. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, true. that's yeah. why they do them. Because mm. it's a less crime. I mean, the way I did it, it's a whole different animal, you know, coming in guns blazing. So it's a whole different animal than just going and scrabbing and grabbing something and running. Obviously, the more money it is, it's a different level of crime. We mm. know that and all that part of it. But as far as fucking uh, uh, respecting them, I respect it. When I hear crimes that just went off or Chris shit, that's good. Good jewelry robbery. And I know I hear about. First of all, I know they're looking at me. I guarantee the fucking feds have looked at me if it's some where was Larry. Right. You know, if it's an elaborate shit like that. And. Then I kind of like, wow, okay, good. And everyone that's happened, I go on TV, like Kim Kardashian getting robbed. I'm on TV for those. Right. And I think, and, and I usually call how they did it on TV. I called so forth two of them, right? How Kim Kardashian was set up, and, and I did it, and I, I called it to the T the, the day on one of CNN or MSNBC, one of the shows my, I'm on, you know, whatever it is. Uh, I fucking totally fucking called that one, and I called another robbery. Uh, where they went through a wall, say uh, literally a wall. They, you see a lot of this crazy shit in England too. Right. You know, like mass setup robberies, hundred million guys in Germany fucking robbed the fucking thing for a billion dollars worth of artwork. Right. Crazy. Yeah. But you gotta respect it, man. <laughs> you gotta respect. Look it, at yeah. me. I can smoke weed and respect that whole night. I mean, there's a reason why true crime is so popular. There's a reason why stories about gangs and stories about crime and stories about people pulling off ambitious shit is like the massively thriving genre on YouTube. I think it's because people want to fantasize they could have did it. Right. You know, oh, fuck, I wonder if I got that. What would I do? Not yeah. only with the money, could have I did it? Did I would have the ball? You know, I did it for so many years, and I mean planning shit down to a fucking... The getaway and you know the last getaway i did when the bullet comes through the windshield and i duck it clears my head it goes into my brother that fucking shit if we didn't have that timed out perfectly perfectly we mm. would have never got away with that thing right there right because we got i mean literally to the time to the toll booth where the guy says we heard them on the fucking god they had a bullet hole and i travel behind an a, a 18 wheeler up to the toll booth go past the toll booth so i can give the money in you know, he like this, so they don't see it. And I heard on that fucking radio, in that booth, be on the lookout. And they gave a kind of description of the car we were in. Wow. But I was gone. I was past that. And I saw he didn't even fucking pay attention. Right. So I'm clear right now. I am literally clear. And I got to get to Brooklyn. And that was in Pennsylvania, Fairless Hills. But if you didn't have it timed out to the fucking minute, right. where you were going to go, how are you going to, how fast were you going to go? How right you're going to, you know, what turn you're going to make. Whatever there's traffic, do you go around that? Day? Everything. Yeah. And if you didn't, if we were a minute later, we, like, might, we might have fucking got caught. I, I love to watch a good documentary about somebody like building a business. You know, mm -mm. Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, oh, this kind yeah, of I shit. That. I love it because it's like fascinating to watch somebody just like build this reality for themselves, create this totally. thing, Me you know, uh, watching somebody pull off like a big heist. 
is kind of like the really chaotic short term version of that. You know, watching somebody try to steal something for ten million or a million or whatever. It's like, you know, it's, it's interesting to watch what Elon Musk has built, but it's kind of interesting in a way to see like what people come up with in terms of how to make a bunch of money really quickly. Well, I think that's our fast switch brain that just wants that excitement right there. <laughs> right. You yeah. know. I love like I, I mean I love to hear and I read the stories. I'm a big reader and I read a big read in prison and the Steve Jobs, all of those stories, how crazy he was. That mm. fucking guy was fucking crazy. True. But and now the heist ones, you know the first thing I think of? If I hear of a good heist, everybody goes, Oh, you must start how would he you know, how did he do it? How did he uh uh you know get away? Did he where's he gonna fence his money? How is it this? My first thing is how much did it cost to do the robbery? Mm. When I see a different robbery and I see what's involved after I hear it, whether it's in the news or wherever, and I read, okay, that costs money, and I could tell right away then if it's a professional. Because if it costs money like my robberies did to put people up to get wherever we're at and get what we need, you have to have money. So that's why the FBI ended up figuring out I was a professional. I wasn't a fucking just jerk off. Mm. And uh, so what happens is when I look at a robbery and I hear... They went to tree, a helicopter. They believe a helicopter went over. It. I know what this fucking robbery costs to set up. You know, with the, whatever they're robbing the helicopter or not, and getting the guy who can do that or whatever. So I know these are professionals, mm. and it's gonna be harder to catch them because they have to have slipped up one way. You know, we all do. Mine was because of a license plate. You know, the, the, uh, I tried to sell a ring to a lady, and she got my license plate in a, in a store I didn't even fucking rob. Mm. And then when I, the FBI floods the area, I didn't know this. They're fucking confiscating every camera in a Wawa store. Mm. Fucking, you know, all the fucking cameras from, you know, it's other jewelry stores. Yeah, always the Wawa. <laughs> I love that fucking Wawa store. Yeah. I stop them there on the road. You know, fucking, when I trip. I have a, a big RV. People always ask me if I... Uh, Used to eat real good Philly cheesesteaks, and I'm like, not so much, but I had a lot of fucking Wawa cheesesteaks. Wawa, oh, fucking right. I, I used had to scarf those things. I'm not proud of it, but that was what I was doing. Uh, totally. Anytime I went to the Philly I area. I fucking love them, too. Left and right. Uh, you know, we, we used to go from station to station sometimes because we didn't want to stop. When we left Florida, let's say, with robbery, we didn't go. We had to stop at the Wawa. I remember our first Wawa I store was in one of the Carolinas or, you know, mm. what the fuck is Wawa? We didn't have Wawa in Florida or New York City. Right. You know, what the fuck? Wawa, New York City? Yeah. Who the fuck is that? It's <laughs> funny, though, how it just having, like, a cool name makes it really just stand out to us in our head that we feel the need to talk about it like it's this fucking... Well, you, 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 your life. brain is your brain is wired that way. Your brain <laughs> is wired, like you said, a business brain. My wife, my my, my brain is kind of wired the same way, yeah. uh, with a, a touch more of maybe I'm getting older, shit, you know. And I'm not. I feel young. You can see. I mean, I, I do. I love to have fun. Shooting your dick up. I, what? What? Listen, I will fucking shoot that dick up until the end. That's <laughs> I'm for proud sure, of you, man. man. I ain't mad. Fuck. When this fucking guy can't fucking get it up, <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> it went, whether it's with a stick, whether it's a fucking pill. Tape a popsicle to it. <laughs> You'll be all right. <laughs> I have to watch your channel. I have to be cho I'll be on your channel. You won't learn much. <laughs> it's amateur shit. <laughs> Compared to what we did. <laughs> I mean, there's some technology out there, you know. Oh, yeah, the Oculus. <sighs> yeah, no. My friend was just telling me that he was fucking doing the Oculus porn thing. Oh, I did it. I How did. was it? Oh, my fucking God. You look down and you see a dick? You, yeah, you think it's your <laughs> dick. You know, like, you know, it's supposed to be your dick. And yeah. then a girl come right on it or whatever you want. Whatever wow. you want in there. And, and come, the, I mean, it's the <laughs> Oculus. I, I, they hooked me, of course. You know, the typical. Okay. Bam, pay. Fuck it. I want to see this shit. Mm. And then you pay for the little longer clip. They'll give you the minute clip, minute and a half clip. And then, you know, you know how it works. And uh, listen, back in the day, we had a, a gangster's own porn places. A lot of them own porn, but mm. made a ton of fucking money. Yeah, they that's they said that was the biggest business in the world. You know, I think about is. that sometimes. I think sex sells, and, it, and it's never not going to sell. Yeah. I don't care how how old people are or young people are. Right. I, I, and and only, I'm not, I can't get into. I'm too old that. for it now. Yeah. Well, my son will get into that business someday. <laughs> you can coach him to become a porn star. Uh, not a porn star, but maybe own the company that that's fucking doing the porn star. There you go. Uh, do the production. What do you think of that? I love it. Well, you you got it. You do it. Father, that's what you do it. Fatherly instruction for, for me. Fucking yeah. porn. We're talking porn business from robbing jewelry stores. Yeah, I mean, hey, it's, no. kind, it's kind of a level up. <laughs> 
Um, who you want to thank? Uh, anything you want to shout out in particular? Obviously, subscribe to the channel. Yeah, they can, uh, people can find me at Larry Lawton. Just Google it anywhere or the you know, Larry Lawton Jewel Deef channel. We have Discord. You know, we have all of that kind of stuff. Instagram, they can check us out there. My book. Uh, and check, wait, my cigar is coming out end of summer. It's going to be crazy. The book, we do so much. Just, just check us out. And if you like it, subscribe. For sure. Larry, appreciate you, man. Thank you very much, Adam. My guy. Good Larry man. Lawton. No Jumper. Coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, TikTok, Patreon, all that. Like, comment, and subscribe. Nojumper.com if you want to support. Appreciate you, man. Great one.